when you get everything set up right, and then you don't. Gah! Hey, what's up, y'all? Regardless of what that said, that is not what we are doing today. I apologize. I had everything set. Anyway, welcome to Heavy Cardboard. Uh, today, we're doing a solo stream of this one right here. Origins, First Builders, designed by Adam Korpinski. Um, so he gets like three quarters credit today, and then David Turtsey gets a quarter credit, maybe, because well, our opponent today was designed by David Turtsey, so even though he's not credited on the box, the solo design is him, and published by Borden Dice. Now, Borden Dice is a partner, uh, Heavy Cardboard, so while this isn't technically sponsored, eh, eh. anyway, so there you go, Origins. First Builders. This is coming out, uh, I think Rainer said, in November. And we did a playthrough of this Thursday, I think it was. Yeah, Thursday afternoon over on the Board and Dice Twitch channel. And uh, Jess and I did a two-player game of that. And I just got the UFO bot, a uh, i.e. The, the, the AI. That's a lot of letters, a lot of vowels. Anyway, the I got the, the bot today, this morning, and I went and got it printed off over at Staples, came home, had to clean up Voidfall, got this all set up and ready to go, and thought I would go ahead and bring it to y'all today. So they didn't ask me to do this, I just know that there are a lot of solo gamers out there, especially after, with all, with all that's going on with the pandemic and stuff, a lot of people have gotten into solo games, myself included more so, and so I thought I would show this off today. So I'm just doing this of my own accord because I thought y'all would want to see it. And then on Tuesday of this week, we are doing a three or four player uh, sponsored live stream of Origins First Builders. That's where I'm going to do the full teaching, full playthrough, and we'll, do, we'll do go through all of that on Tuesday night. But as it is today, uh, I am not going to talk about uh, how to play this multiplayer, although you're going to get a feel for it pretty much Um in the solo playthrough because my actions are the same actions that's available in the multiplayer. The AI, however, is a real serious, not pleasant person. Uh, from reading through everything, I thought, uh, wow, this is gonna be difficult, so this should be amusing for y'all out there, all right? Now, a couple things to get started. I've played this game five times now since we've gotten it. Uh, today will be game number six. I have not played it solo. And a couple other things on that note, but I'm pretty well versed in the game. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. The AI that comes in the rule book when the game is released is what's called a passive AI. It's basically, hey, try and beat this score. Okay? The one that... I'm showing y'all today is a separately designed AI, which is an active AI, and this is actively trying to destroy us, i.e. outscore us, and we have to beat it. And so, for the, you have two. The passive one is, hey, beat this score. Okay, easy enough. This one, however, um, seems pretty clever, and it's designed by David Turtsey, so I think, if you've played any solo designs of his, this will feel very familiar, it looks like. Now, again, I haven't done this, and I only got this this morning, okay? However, uh, it's only four pages of rules, and it, it's really not too difficult here, okay? And then there is a player aid for the UFO bot AI. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably, but that is it. This is going to be available on Board and Dice site as well as BGG. Uh, by the time you get your copies of the game, so this will be available, posted, and you'll just have to print it out. You, it's four or two sheets, double-sided, and then two single-sided, this and then the AI player board. You don't have to get it on cardstock like I did, but, you know, whatever. It's, it's on board and dice's dime. That's fine. Thanks, Rainer. All right, so that's it. Now, I'm also going to leave it up to y'all how much y'all want me to teach you as I go and how much of the setup you want me to go over, because the setup is different with the uh, solo game here than it is for the multiplayer or non-solo game. So let me know there, and we'll go from there. All right, so there we go, okay? All right, so 
I'm going to assume that y'all did not watch the Twitch stream. And so we will just go ahead and go over an overview of the game. And then unless y'all tell me otherwise, I'm going to go over the setup for the solo game for this only and go from there. And then with that overview, I will give you the gist of what I'm going to be doing, what the AI is going to be doing, and then we'll go over the details as we play, as I want to do with solo games on this channel, okay? All right, so first off, let's go over what you're looking at here. Victory point track, round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Then we have encounter sites. These are going to be uh, the worker placement aspect. Let me back up. Let's talk about the, the, the theme or the setting. Uh, we have touch base with alien races and they have helped us and we are trying to score victory points. Hey, just being honest here, okay? This is predominantly a dice placement game, all right? We are going to be acquiring dice, well, really out here, but these will be for our starter dice, uh, putting them into our uh, population bases and using them as workers. The power or the strength of those dice, going to be based on the pip value, going to allow us to go up to these encounter sites to do certain actions. Those actions are going to be include building our buildings, adding to our city over in this area with the tiles. In addition to that, we're going to acquire more workers. There are color workers or uh, freemen if you will, all right? And then there are speakers, which are basically temporary workers that don't require population bases and are uh, temporary one-time use, and they're colorless, so they're not going to give you any bonuses that you would see up there. In addition to that, we're going to be able to increase our military strength over here in the arena, and we're going to be able to attack here in the arena. However, when I say attack, understand that this is not player to player combat. This is simply when you attack, get stuff, get resources, get victory points. That's all that is, okay? So there's no uh, take that directly. There is some nastiness in this game though. Don't, don't, be, uh, don't be confused that there's not, but there's not direct conflict. It's a board and dice game, ergo, it must have temple tracks. So we have three temple tracks here that have to do with the zodiacs. And the three that were randomly chosen, that I chose, Leo, Pisces, and Taurus of the zodiac, we have three tracks which we're going to move up to be able to score victory points as well. So that's what we're doing when we're placing dice out here. In addition to that, we're going to be, as I said, when we build buildings, we're going to what's called closing a district. Closing a district is taking dice and placing them out adjacent to an area that is completely closed off in a two by two grid of tiles. So we start with two tiles. If we have two more over here, I could then place a die in the middle and it's basically retired. Think of it that way. You're not gonna be able to use it, but it is going to be a score multiplier at the end of the game. So whatever the pip value of the die is, is going to be multiplied by the number of colored discs that match the color of that die. So if I put a yellow four here in between these four buildings, work with me here, and I have three yellow discs or tower discs, so it'd be four times three of the yellow, that's 12 points for that one uh, what's called seat of power die at the end of the game. So in addition to getting the buildings, getting dice, placing dice here, we're going to be able to acquire more tower discs over here to add to our multiplier, which is going to be one of the main ways we're going to be scoring points, especially at the end of the game. Okay, and last but not least, the thing that we can do is we can grow our population. So we start out with what will be, once we actually start the game, three workers. We have our Archon, which is kind of a, starts out pretty basic, uh, uh, ignore uh, cost and pip value worker, that is our Archon right here. In addition to that, we're gonna start with two Freeman or colored dice out here. These technically will be in those. So we'll start with those three workers. Throughout the game, we're going to acquire more of these workers, but we can only acquire more of these workers when we have unlocked 
our population basis. How do we do that? We're going to pay the resources as an action to unlock those. Then we can acquire more dice. And again, we're going to be able to acquire uh, uh, speaker dice, which are don't require bases and they're temporary workers. Rinse and repeat, and that's what we're trying to do to be able to score points. The UFO bot works a little bit differently. And we'll leave it at that, okay? I think that works. All right, y'all are not very talkative today. All right, cool. So that's kind of the gist of what we're doing. Now let's go ahead and talk about setup, okay? So setup here, we have randomly, and legitimately this was random, I put out the bonus tiles of the uh, encounter sites. And then I matched it with the motherships. Now you'll notice the motherships all have pit values on them that range from one to six. I will point out that when you when y'all get your copies, they won't be cool little outlined and colored pips. They will just be the color of the plastic. It takes about five minutes with a sharpie, and you can you too can make them look really pretty like that. I did that for streaming, but it's up to you. You want to do them in silver? Do you want to do them different colors? Knock yourself out. Anyway, just letting you know. We have the blue, the orange, the red, the yellow, and the purple encounter sites, okay? So we set all that up there. Then we have one of each of the Freeman dice out here. We roll, I rolled those, and then those are lowest to highest. However, when tied, we have the buildings. The, these are stacks of the supply of the various colors, and then these were randomly put out from there. These are put out lowest to highest. However, when they're tied, whoever, whichever color is lower on this track goes higher to the left. So you'll notice that the purple four and the orange four, we have the purple four and the orange four. So the orange is higher than the purple because it ended up that way. So therefore the purple gets to go as a cheaper price. Easy enough. We put out two uh, speaker dice randomly. We rolled those. The speaker dice go from two to five. These are regular one to six sided dice. Put discs out on the military track. Put discs out on the three zodiacs down here for the three temples. The three temples are the forest mountain and sea temples. They start right there on those spaces, not on the zeros. Uh, we chose three random zodiacs over there. These are the available dice from the dice pool. Normally in a multiplayer game, those are going to be potentially one of the triggers for the end of the game. They are not in the solo, but I just thought I would put them up here for y'all. One player is the first player. That is always going to be us in the uh, with the UFO bot. Every player has an agora, and every player has a palace. All right? It's set up in this order, and then the palace has one tower disc of each color as printed on there as you can see. So those are just on there like so. In addition to that, uh, we start with one gold, which is a wild resource, as well as will allow us to purchase more tower discs over there. And we start with one stone, one food or wheat. I will, uh, we will use those terms interchangeably. Uh, one wisdom, okay, uh, resource as well. So we start with the three basic resources here and the one gold, which is a wild resource. We start with our Archon and two population bases available to us. We start with the four that are unlockable. We have a little player aid that on the other side says pass when we choose to pass. And that's pretty much our area. Now, a couple other things. Over here for the AI or the UFO bot, again, I will use those terms interchangeably. They start with one die. They will have one die of each in their active area. Their active area is this little kind of like uh, light that's down there that's shining down. Then they have the exhausted area. So as they use dice, then they will go over here. Then they have their action track. Their Archon is going to be moving along this track. By the way, y'all need to randomly pick a number. Let's see. One, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So pick a number one through seven, and that's where the Archon is going to start. And then they start with one tower disc down here in their samples area as well. The last bit of setup is going to be, uh, it's going to change every game regardless of number of players, as well as whether it's solo or multiplayer. And what that is are the district cards. These are the patterns that we are hoping to make with our buildings 
to be able to score the points that are shown at the bottom of that. I'll talk about that more later in a bit. However, the thing for setup that matters is the number of cards with the, against the UFO bot is four, and those were legitimately randomly put out there. In addition to that, there should be, and I have failed y'all, there should be two uh, gold on top of each of these, but I haven't put them out there yet because I wanted to show you the top part, which are the tower setup. So every tower disc that you can see over here, the tower kind of staging area or holding area, has a base of one. In addition to that one disc that we put out there, we then take a look at the four district cards and count how many of each color there are. So for yellow, it has a base of one, plus one, plus one, plus one. So one, two, three, plus the base of one is four. That's why there's four yellow discs. Do that for orange, same thing, red, purple, blue, and that's all the top part of the cards are used for. So now that I have explained that, and I will butcher my pretty setup with everything here, I will go ahead and put out two gold. There we go. So y'all don't need to see those anymore because we have gone over setup. All right. All right, so that is all of setup for the game. These, we're going to draft those uh, to be able to begin um, for us to play because we're going to start with two of these, all right? So uh, I had three people chime in and y'all all picked different numbers. So I will pick uh, two because, well, two wasn't picked. So, all right, so we will go right there. That's where their Archon will start, over there. All right. Oh, wait, now they're coming in. One, two, three, four, seven. So it's five or six. Let's go five, nice round number. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. That's where their Archon will stop. Done, y'all took too long. All right, so. Yep, that's it. All right, we are the first player. Every round, we keep the first player marker. Um, or if you prefer the first player marker, it doesn't move, we keep it the whole game. All right, so now the last thing we need to do for setup is we need to roll these five dice, and when we do so, the uh, re-roll any sixes, and then the two highest are unavailable to us for the beginning of the game. Okay, there we go. So the four is unavailable for us to choose. And in addition to that, let me see. And let's see, your choice if tied. So basically I get to choose any of those four dice. Well, looking at this, I do like the idea of yellow and orange because that allows us to get more workers. I haven't explained this yet to y'all, but that's okay. Getting more workers uh, has been important to me, and uh, I've done fairly well when I've played this game. So I, hmm. the problem is the low pip value scares me. But there are higher pip values available, so you know what, we will choose these two dice to get started. All right, so we're gonna choose the one and the two. Now, low pip value means Placing them up here might cost us wisdom, might cost us resources, all right? High pip value gives us more flexibility, more usefulness out of them, as well as the ability to possibly take bonus actions later on, or additional actions, I should say. Uh, however, they retire. Once they turn into sixes and then would have birthdays after that and they would graduate, meaning they would go from a six to a seven, six-sided dice only have six sides, uh, th then they retire possibly become advisors down here at the bottom. That's both great and terrible because we lose workers. Hmm. So I went, I have been of the mind that I prefer dealing with lower pip value ones to start, but that's not always, uh, that's not a tried and true. It is for me, but that's not the end all be all is what I'm trying to say. All right. Excellent. We have started now. Let me see. Okay, on his turn, 
I'm probably gonna use his, it's, whatever. We will roll it's dice. We're not gonna worry about that. Let's take a look. On our turn, we can do one of these five things. So we're gonna do one thing, then the AI is gonna do one thing, then we're gonna do one thing, then the AI rinse and repeat until we choose the pass, or we must pass, either or, and then the AI is going to continue doing things until either until it must pass, per the rules. So, visit an encounter site is the majority of the game, and that is going to be using our dice to go. So we have three workers to start, our colorless Archon, and we have an orange one and a yellow two. They do not have to go into their specific areas, meaning I could put a orange one over in the purple area to be able to take actions. But I'm going to use these three things to be able to go up to the various encounter sites. Now, on the encounter sites, they are not worker placement-esque, meaning they are not limited. So all of our dice and all of our archons, same with the AI, or well, multiplayer as it were, can all go into one area and that's okay, is what I'm trying to say. That's going to be the majority of our actions. Then later on, as we build buildings, we're going to be able to close a district. That is having at least four buildings enclosing an area, right? But we'll talk about that more later, but that's gonna be important for scoring. Building a tower level is going to be spending gold and depending on it, the number of discs of a given color is the cost in gold to acquire another disc. So I have one of each, so it'll cost me one gold to be able to buy one of those. If I had two yellow and I wanted to buy another yellow, it would cost me two yellow or two gold. If I had three yellow, it would cost me three gold. You get the idea, okay? To be Obviously, those are piece limited. What you see is what you get. That, again, tied in with the closing a district, that's gonna be the multiplier that I'm talking about. So closing a district with high pit value is going to be good, multiplied by the tower level of the same color, that's gonna be in-game points. So keep that in mind, but those are two options, but that's for a later turn, not right now. Growing population, oh, that seems really good to me. Growing population is getting more workers. In a worker placement game, that's usually a good idea. So to be able to do that, we must have that much wheat. So two, four, six, eight, respectively, working left to right. We start with one wheat. Well, we do have a gold, which can always be used as a wild resource, or it can be used as, you know, gold to be able to buy more towers. But Growing our population is going to be good because more workers is good, okay? You have to have a base before you can then come out and get more dice up here. We do that by visiting encounter sites. You get the idea. Finally, when we are all done, or we choose to be done, or we must be done because we can't do any of those things, we pass. When we pass, we're going to take all our workers back. Our workers are then going to add one pip value to whatever the number is, a one to a two, two to a three, et cetera, et cetera, until it gets to a six. When it becomes a six, it retires. It will come down here, provided there are no others down here of the same color. If there are, we will score some amount of points and then throw it back into the supply. If it's, there isn't of that color, it will come down here and now our Archon will also have those colors associated with it. Why does that matter? Because up in the encounter sites, when we place a die up there, we're going to be able to take one of the gray actions, and if it's a matching color, we're going to be able to take the bonus action as well. However, again, the pip values I mentioned. So if I put, say, a one up here, is it equal to or higher than the number shown there? The answer is yes. You don't pay anything, you're good. But the first thing you do whenever you place a worker here, whether it's a die, whether it's a uh, colorless die, a colored die or your Archon, very first thing is that goes there. Again, it only matters when you place it, does it equal or exceed? If the answer is yes, then you're good to go. You don't have to worry about it, okay? But when I do that, you can take one of the two gray actions. In addition, before or after, you can do the bonus action. The bonus action is whatever is that colored tile. So in this case, Take a speaker die. Hey, more work, temporary workers. That's awesome. So that might be a reason why you want to try and match up colors. That makes sense? Good. All right, good. Now, there are a lot of different strategies in this game. Going up the temples, advancing the military track. The thing that you must do, however, though, is build. 
you have to be able to build for end game points for that multiplier, right? The pip value and the towers. So doing this and doing this are going to be super important. Keep that in mind. Everything else is secondary to that, okay? All right. So all that's being said, what do we want to do with turn one? Well, we have a couple of options here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the encounter sites. We have an orange and yellow, so let's focus on these two to start. The orange one, in fact, the top of all the gray actions, I think are pretty self-explanatory. Get those resources. Three stone, three food, three wisdom. This symbol here means one of, or choose one of any of the basic resources. What are the basic resources? Stone, food, or Wisdom. In addition to that, get one gold. Pretty simple. This one, get one of each of the basic resources. All right. Awesome. The ones below that, though, remember, it's an either or, usually. The ones below that are going to what makes the specific uh, areas unique. So, this one is going to have to do with the military track, advancing on that and getting more resources and points. This one is building buildings. That's going to be useful. This one is paying stone to advance on any one temple track and then getting the rule breaker for the card. Take the card that's shown there. This is how we get more uh, regular workers, but you have to have unlocked population uh, bases or have an empty population base in order to do so. And finally, this one is pay one to three food, and for every food you pay, you either can increase the pip value of any Freeman die you have that isn't used. Isn't used meaning is still here, not already out here. And you can't do that for any that are up here that have closed the district or any advisors. You can't use those, only ones that are down here. Or increase on the military track. The bonus actions, pay a stone, go up a temple track, but you don't get the card. Notice it doesn't show the card symbol there. Get a uh, speaker die, provided there are some available. Pay a wisdom and advance on the military track or uh, attack, i.e. get resources and or points. Uh, get a basic resource of your choice. And finally, pay a food and Build the building, if you wish. Okay? All that makes sense, I think. All right? Cool. All right. Excellent. So we are uh, ready to rock and roll. So for us, I like having more workers because worker placement. Um, so I think the very first thing is going against what a lot of people believe is, is smart. That's okay. I'm good with that. So what we're going to do is instead of placing a worker out there, I'm at, because we only because we only have three workers here. Is I'm going to go ahead and not use one of these workers to get extra food, which the extra food would be there, or there, or there, because I only have a certain number of workers. I, I have a limited number, so instead of that, I'm actually going to use the gold as a food there and a second food because I'm going to grow population and that costs two food I've done so boom like so okay now we still don't have a worker we can use we're going to have to go here to be able to do that action to be able to grab another one of these dice but it kind of made sense for me to go ahead and do that I thought so anyways all right that's our turn, because we did one of those five things. Okay. All right. UFO bot's turn. First things first, on its first turn, we're going to roll all of its dice. Uh, yeah, we do not re-roll sixes. Okay. So we have a bunch of fives and some threes. Okay. So per the rules, it says, roll every die on the UFO board's active area. Select the lowest. In case of a tie, so the lowest would be between those two, uh, orange, red, blue, purple, yellow, white, in that order. Okay? So orange or red, no. Blue, no. Purple, yes. So purple is the die we are going to use. So I'm just going to put it up there to show that that is the active die that we are using for its first turn. 
advance the Archon on the UFO bot's board clockwise by a number of spaces equal to the selected die's value. Okay, so it's a three, so clockwise, it's gonna go one, two, three, so it's going to go onto the tower spot. See that symbol? Now, that symbol matches up, as I will show you. All the symbols have, that is what it's going to do on its given turn. Now, that might as well be in Cyrillic or hieroglyphics for me right now because, well, I haven't memorized all this stuff and I assume you all haven't either because you've never seen this before. So that is the action that it's going to take, okay? Now, in addition to that, we will, we will do that effect here in a minute, but before we go through what it actually does, this is a purple die, okay? So we look at the purple encounter space and we advance that one, regardless. If it's a six, Hey, good news, it rolls over into a one. That's beneficial for us because um, low pip values. But as it is, now it, you need a two or higher to go here without any cost. What's the cost? Well, if I were to place a one there instead, you pay the difference in wisdom, which I have a wisdom. One plus one wisdom is two. If that were a six, I would owe five wisdom. Probably not a smart thing to do. However, if you choose to place an Archon, or your Archon, Archons ignore the number that is here, doesn't matter what it is, but again, it doesn't have a color right now, so I don't get to do the bonus thing. All I would get to do is one of the two things. But the first thing that I would have to do when I go there is advance that. But as it is, again, just belaboring things probably, but okay, all right? And yes, Molly B. Dane, um, I took that risk that the orange die, that had it been the orange one, that I took a risk that I would have had to have paid a, uh, a, a wisdom, but I was willing to wait for it, roll the dice on that. -bum -bum -bum. All right, so now that we have done that, oh, by the way, if uh, any of the encounter sites, if uh, we would, hmm, hold on. If it were a white die, i.e. a citizen, uh, a speaker die that we had chosen as the active, then we would do the lowest one, and if tied, it would be the leftmost. Okay, cool, all right, done. All right, now, if the die selected was not white, perform an encounter sight's bonus effect too. So yay, the AI gets to not only do what is that, which is the tower action, the tower action for, or all of the actions for the AI are completely different than what the base game, what we get to do. They're actually put out right here, as well as, like I said, in hieroglyphics right here, but we don't know what that is yet, but we'll make sense of it here in a minute. In addition to that, if it's colored, it gets a bonus effect. Okay, then after that, we're going to move that over. It's been used, boom, he's done, it's back to our turn. Okay. But as it is, let's just go ahead and talk about what his action is. It's the tower. The UFO bot will take a tower piece and place it in its sample area. Its sample area is down here. All right, which one will it take? It is not necessarily going to take a purple because we use the purple die. Instead, it's going to uh, take a color that has the most paired dice in its sample area. What the hell are paired dice, you might be asking? Well, first off, this is the sample area. It ain't got no dice, so he has no paired anything here. What it is, though, is as he acquires buildings and as it acquires dice, when it's called for in the various actions out here, we're going to put the dice uh, that match the color of building on top of it. A building with a die on it is now, wait for it, paired. Okay, but as it is, it has none. Amongst tied options, take the color it has the most total pips on paired dice. Well, it has no dice down here, so we can move on. Amongst tied options, take the color that has the fewest tower disks available. Oh, okay. Well, let's take a look at the tower disks. There are three blue and there are three red. Okay, so it's still tied. If tied, choose the one closer to the top of the tower disk market. Well, uh, top to, oh, and orange, so I guess it's going to take an orange. So it's going to take an orange disk and add it over here into its sample area. Okay? Have a good one, Corey. Hopefully you come back later. That is the tower action. So, now that we have understood that, let's try and translate. 
it's going to take a disc. Here, I'll run through the steps while y'all are looking at this. Take a color it has the most uh, paired dice in its sample area. So, dice on top of buildings. Okay, okay, cool. So, that's what disc we should take. But, if tied, then uh, the second step is, amongst tied options, take a color it has the most total pips of. That's what that is. That is the most pips, okay, of paired. Okay. Then, uh, amongst tied options of those, take the color it has the fewer discs available remaining. So that is the fewest remaining. And then, the closest to the top of those tied. All that actually makes sense now that I un see what I'm looking at. Okay, cool. So that is the tower action. However, it is a purple die. The purple is going, purple is that, so now it's going to do what that bonus action is. You might be asking yourself, what is that? Purple. Take the most, the topmost building and place it in the UFO bot's samples area. Okay. Well, the, that is, let me uh, take the topmost building. It's going to be the red building. It's a stronghold there. It does, still does not have any dice uh, for it. Okay, done. Whenever you take a building, all of these will conveyor, and this is the same in the multiplayer game. And then what color was taken? The red was taken, so the veteran settlement comes out. We then flip over the next red, and there we go. Okay? Uh, purple action, done. Now, that seemed kind of long but I'm just walking through everything on the first time it takes an action. After that, I won't bother going through it step by step, but there we go. So now it's our turn. Okay. So now that we have an empty base, kind of makes sense. Go ahead, maybe get another worker. How do we get another worker? Coming over here to the yellow area. Now it behooves us to go ahead and place the uh, yellow die there so we get the bonus action in addition. Well, that makes sense. So let's go ahead, place that yellow two there. Is it equal to or higher? Yes, good. Okay, we don't pay anything. We advance the mothership there. So now we have a choice. We may either take one resource of our choice and a gold or a die. In addition, we may take a resource of our choice and we can do that first. Well, let's go ahead and look at the dice. Well, what die do we want? Well, it depends what actions we want to take. We need more resources, we want to build buildings, all of this stuff. Um, we currently only have one wisdom, okay? So that means we can either pay zero wisdom for the red die, one for the blue, or I'm sorry, for the yellow, or we could get the resource there, which is a wisdom, immediately spend it to be able to take one of those dice. I, I mean, the higher pip values, again, more uh, gives us flexibility. Um, I would love to take the orange, honestly, because that gives us the uh, speaker die, which temporary workers, and that's great. Uh, we already have an orange, so we're okay with that. Um, ah, getting another yellow to be able to get another gold and a resource, not a terrible idea, but I think early on, we probably want to focus on one of these, possibly, we have an orange, we can't do that. Red and it's free and we need more wisdom. So why don't we go ahead and do that? It's low pip value. That's the only thing that kind of stinks. You know what, on second thought, I think we will go ahead and take a wisdom for that, pay the other wisdom that we already have, so that's paying two, and we'll go ahead and take that three die. That three will then come over into the population base there. But now that we've taken a die here, these will f roll over or slide in. We're going to go ahead and take one from the supply, roll it. And regardless of what it rolled, even if it had been a, a one, it would have gone here. If it's a six, you re-roll it and that will fill in the last slot like so. 
So we've taken the bonus action and we took the action. That's it. We now have three workers available to us. That seems pretty good. All right. No, the yellow's pretty yellow. It's, it's kind of a mustardy yellow, let's call it, okay? All right. Michael, I don't know what BYOS is. Bring your own solo. All right, so AI's turn. AI is going to choose the lowest value die. There you go, he's going to move three. One, two, three. It's going to be a building. Okay. So you know what? How about I do this for y'all? I'll just put this right here. It is going to be the top row as I go ahead and translate the hieroglyphics. So here we go. Uh, all right. Uh, it is a yellow die, so he's going to be able to do the yellow bonus action as well, which is going to be that, which um, that's not good for us. Uh, I didn't mention how the game ends yet, but I will here in a little bit. Okay. Uh, also, what did I forget to do? That is yellow. That is going to increase that there. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So the action is build. UFO bot takes a building from the offer, places it in the sample area. What color to take? If possible, choose a color with at least one unpaired die. There's still no dice over here. And yes, I killed their archon. All right. So, no dice, nothing's paired for them right now. So, that's what that says. Most unpaired, okay? Or with at least one unpaired, I should say. Then, if still multiple options remain, choose the color it has more tower pieces of. Okay. So, that is the same symbol, remember, as that one. That's least temple, that, or tower, that's most tower. Oh, well, that's going to be orange. Okay. So it's going to take the orange building. Now, the UFO bot, as, as it is wont to do, never uh, takes, uh, never pays costs, never takes resources, all of that. So it's going to take code of laws. That's going to come over. That's going to go there. Again, we are going to conveyor. Stone circle comes out. I haven't even talked about the buildings and what they do yet and the uh, costs associated because we haven't really thought about doing that yet. I will here in a bit. All right, so that's its main action, but it's a yellow die. The yellow die says, hey, lose two points. Oh, great. We lose two points, the, the AI doesn't. The AI only gets points at the end of the game. So you'll notice we started at 15. We're back to 13. Why does that matter? If at any point you are at zero or below zero, let me check. Uh, if you have zero or fewer, you immediately lose the game. Well, okay, so there's that. How does the game end? Five rounds. Normally in a multiplayer game, there are four different ways the end game's triggered. We don't need to worry about that. Okay, so he's done. Our turn. And remember, in addition to, oh, we don't have any pit values that high, we have the Archon, which gets to ignore pit values, okay? Oh, uh, beat your own score. Uh, no, this is the active AI. Uh, this is the world premiere of the active AI for Origin. Um, the one that's in the rule book is the beat your own score passive AI. All right? Cool. All right, have a good one, Molly. All right. So we have more workers. Feel a little bit better about that now. Now, uh, how about we get some more workers? And if we had more wisdom, we'd be able to build a building as well. So maybe we hold off on that. You know what I like doing? The idea here. Okay. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the cost associated with the various buildings. So let's go ahead and talk about that for a moment because that's going to come into play. Whenever you're going to build a building, you're going to have to pay the wisdom cost as shown all the way down. In addition, you have to pay the stone cost 
for the various buildings. Now, you could choose to pay none of the cost of a building, meaning no wisdom and no stone, to be able to build a colorless farm, which sometimes can be useful. However, the majority of these, the reason we're wanting to build these buildings, again, is to make these patterns to be able to score 15, 12, etc. points, okay? We start with two colorless buildings in this position. You can always rotate these in any order. You can mirror them. So basically, any configuration that you can create with those is what you want to do. Now, I like being able to build this artist parlor, okay? Because it says when you build it, you gain three victory points for every color among your freemen. Well, I have yellow, orange, and blue right now, so that would be nine points. That seems good. Because again, getting down to zero is bad, plus I gotta beat the AI. So the cost of that is zero wisdom, which is good, because I have no wisdom, but three stone. I only have one stone. So getting stone first here with the blue die, and then coming over here to be able to build, in addition to getting an additional colorless uh, worker, seems like a pretty good idea. Now, I gotta run the risk that the AI doesn't build that building, but seeing as he's currently here and he's going to go six or five next turn, he ends up there taking dice. I think that's okay. So let's go ahead and take our three value blue up here. Again, we don't have to put it there, but why not? So we can maybe take the bonus. We're choosing to do the top one, which is pretty simple. Just go ahead and take three stone. But with that three stone, I can choose if I wish to go ahead and pay one of those stone to go ahead and come down and advance on the temple tracks, okay? One of them, one step on one temple track. Why do I want to do that? Well, at the end of the game, wherever you are on all three temples matters because whichever one you're the highest on gets thrown away and then you score the others. So moving up temple track seems good. In addition to that, at the end of a round, whoever is leading on the various temple tracks gets the card associated with that temple. So what are those? Well, again, these were sort of randomly put out here. This one says, every time you close a district, not something we're planning on doing right away, uh, add two to uh, its seat of power die. So when you close that district, again, that's the multiplier the die that you're retiring. So if you retire it at a four, it becomes a six. That's good, but not something I really need to concern myself with right now. Pisces, you can treat every bonus action as if its effect was gain one gold. Meaning, oh, I don't wanna build here. Okay, I'll just take a gold. I'll just take a gold, I'll take a gold. Those are what it means. So that's really useful. And then Taurus says, pay a wisdom fewer for buildings and citizen dice from the offer. So normally you would have to pay those amount, pay one less, down to zero, obviously, and same with the buildings here. So, we have four stone. The building I'm looking at building, that one, doesn't cost us any wisdom. Uh, but I like the idea of, you know, tree, both of these. Being able to build more buildings and paying less wisdom, that seems like a good thing. And I have, this one's going to cost three stone. I have four. I have an extra stone. I'm sure I could use something with that, but this seems like a pretty good thing to do. So I will go ahead and pay the one stone to move up one temple track, one space. I will go ahead and move up the C temple. Boom, done. So if I'm still leading, and by the way, if the AI is on top, but I was there first, I'm leading, I would still get the card. Doesn't apply right now, but I don't need it right now because I still have the three stone and it costs me zero wisdom, so I'm okay with that. So I've done the bonus action, I've done the base action. Done, okay? All right, UFO bot time. All right, so the order, because we have three tied die, oh, by the way, that goes there. Yeah, three tied dice. So it is red, orange first. So it's going to be orange. All right. It's going to be orange. So uh, unfortunately, that's going to go there. Now, I could have looked and seen that because there, but 
I got a lot on my plate right here, okay? No, it's one period, Murr. It's not uh, multiples. I don't think, you know, that I will double check that. I just, I inferred that, but let me double check. Pay one stone to move up one space. The end. So no, you can't pay seven stone to all the way up. Okay. I thought that was the case, but there you go. Okay. Um, so orange moved up. Good. He's going to get the bonus. And he's moving five. One, two. Three, four, and five. That is that with a plus symbol. Again, I will do this. That is this, but with a plus symbol. We'll get there. Okay. It's going to take a die from the offer and place it in its sample area. Maintains the die value. What color? Choose a color with at least one unpaired building. So, at least one unpaired building is what that represents. Okay, do we have any? Well, yes, we actually have two. We have orange and red that are unpaired, meaning it doesn't have a die sitting on top of it. If still multiple options, choose the color it has more tower pieces of. I am not surprised at all about that. So most tower pieces. Okay, well, we can stop right there because the orange one has the most tower pieces. So there, but let's go ahead and talk about the other two. If still uh, multiple options, the highest value die of the remaining, and if still tied, the furthest to the left. Okay. However, this one with the plus symbol says, oh, and add a pip value, which means more points for him. Okay. And it was the plus value, so add a pip value. Well, we know it's going to be the orange die. The orange die is this one, so there. It's going to add a pip value. It's going to be a five. He now has a paired die or a paired building right there, okay? So whenever we're talking paired, right now it's just the orange one that has it. Pretty simple on that, I think, right? Okay, moving on. Uh, the orange bonus action right here, it's not that, for, but it's orange, so here we go. The orange says, take the highest value available speaker die, if any, and place it in the pool of available dice. If there are no speaker dice available, nothing happens. So yeah, he still gets a die. So that actually is the same, which sucks because we were about to do that. So he takes the five and that's just more actions available to him and he's done with his turn. Boo, boo. Okay. All right. So we need to refill this. So that comes over. We take an orange. UFO bot, do you want to roll? No? Okay, I'll do it for you. It becomes a three. All right. We have two workers left. This is a two value. We have no wisdom, which means we cannot place the orange die there to do that. But we can place the archon. The problem with placing the archon there is what? Oh, that's right. We don't get the bonus because our Archon is colorless. So we don't get that die. Yeah. All right. Well, if we want wisdom to be able to place the orange die there, we then could go here to gain three wisdom with our Archon. The other option is we could go here with our Archon, but that makes that more expensive for us for next turn. I don't like the idea of that because we would get one wisdom and a gold. Nice, but no. We could go here, which would add one to this again, but we have no purple dice, so not terribly worried about that yet, and get one of each resource, a food, a wisdom, and a uh, stone. But I think the obvious thing to do, since he kind of hurt us with that, is go ahead and place our Archon out there. Our Archon only allows us to do one of the top two, and uh, as I've mentioned, I think the three wisdom makes the most sense because we're going to need wisdom to get that to be able to get another die. It's a temporary die, but I think being able to do that, plus we're going to be able to build with that next turn, all that makes sense to me. Are y'all following along? Grunt once for yes. All right. Our, uh, AI time. 
So now, it will choose, they're all fives. White is the last one that it's going to choose. So it goes orange, then red, so it's going to be red. So that means the red is going to increase one pip value there. Okay. It is, uh, sorry, gonna move five. One, two, three, four, and five. Gonna advance on a temple track and take the associated card, but we'll get there. Let's go ahead, go over that. That is going to be this symbol right here. So that one says, uh, Increase one of its, uh, or increase its position on the Zodiac track by two. Increase the lowest Zodiac position that it is. Well, it, uh, it's, it hasn't started any of them. So then of those, uh, the one where your position is the lowest. So that means it's going to be either one of these, because I've actually moved on that track now. So it's going to be one of those two, but still tied. So that is that one. So this then, says, uh, if still ch tied, choose the leftmost of the tied tracks, then place the corresponding card next to the UFO bot's board. If the UFO bot already has the matching card, you lose five points instead. Leftmost, it goes there. Thankfully, it doesn't have the Leo card. Sheesh. So that we'll just go ahead and place right there, so it has the Leo card. So if it has to do that one again, I'm gonna lose five points, okay? All right, so that is a red die. The red die bonus there says, if its military is higher than yours, it's not, we're both st still tied at zero, you lose three points. Otherwise, increase the UFO bot's military position by one, and the UFO bot does not collect superiority tokens. Now, we haven't talked about those, but this is, uh, if it's higher than you on the military track, you lose three points. If not, advance at one. Okay, cool. All right. So, let's take a look at the military track. We haven't talked about it yet. Military track here, it's going to, boop, increase one spot. All right. So, the military track, every time you cross one of these thresholds, these are superiority tokens, okay? They look like that. Now, what are these? These allow you to take an additional turn back to back. You can only do one of these, so if I had five, I can't take five turns in a row or six turns in a row as it were. Um, I can only do one at a time per turn on these, but provided I have the ability to do one of those things, I can then do one of those things, okay? So that's nice, but the UFO uh, bot doesn't get those. But as you advance, when you do an attack action, an attack action is going to be the cross sword symbol right there. When you do so, you're not hurting anybody. All you're doing is getting whatever is shown on the inside here. This is convert a basic resource to a gold, get a wheat, get a, uh, a wisdom, get any uh, basic resource and a stone, etc. And in addition to that, you score one point for every opponent that you're ahead of, ahead of meaning not in the same space, further back, and one point for every superiority marker that you have passed. So, for instance, if I were here, I would get a stone, and if I attacked, I got a stone, and then I would score one, two, three, and I'm ahead of one, so four point, oy vey. There we go, let's try that again. If I were here, sorry about that, I would get a stone, and then I would get one, two, three, and I'm ahead of one opponent for four points all day. But as it is, I'm not, but that's how military works. Okay. So he is done with his turn there. Okay. So our turn, uh, that worked out. He didn't, he didn't mess with us. Okay. Sorry about that. Wrong button. My bad. Uh, we are going to go ahead and visit that encounter site. We're going to stay on target. So it is going to cost us one wisdom to go there because we're placing a one and that's a two differences one wisdom there okay cool done uh so we get to take the speaker die so there is one left so cool that's an extra action that's good in addition to that we can either take three food or build a building i elect to build a building all right
So let's go ahead. Which building? Well, I've already talked about it. The artist parlor makes a lot of sense to me, okay? Is it two? Did I mess that up? Oh, it's two. Thank you. It was. Yep. Thanks, uh, Salt. It's two steps. It moves up. It says two right there. So my bad. Okay. Uh, get back. I lost my... There you go. So here, zero wisdom, and it's going to cost me three stone. I have three stone. That works out there. All right. So now... I have to decide where to build, okay? Well, you know what? Before I show that, let's take a look at the districts. You'll notice that there is only one of the district cards that have purple buildings. It is this one. That's a red and orange, yellow and orange, blue and red, uh, purple and blue. All right, the gray can be any building, does not matter. It could be a gray building, it could be a purple building, it doesn't matter but I have to have it in that symbol or in that um, orientation, but I can rotate, I can flip it, I can do whatever it is I want. But as I'm looking at that, I mean, since there's only one that has a purple on it, I don't think it really matters. Basing it off of the Agora, and since it's above it or, or to the side. When you build, you must build adjacent, either uh, horizontally, or I guess, uh, aye vey orthogonally adjacent to an existing building. So at the beginning of the game, you have six choices. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could either build it there or build it there. Either one makes sense for that pattern, right? So let's go ahead and just put it there. I'm fine with that, okay? In addition to that, when you build that building, it activates right now. Gain three victory points for every color among your freemen. Freemen are in population basis. They are not seats of power and they are not advisors and they are not colorless, okay, for speakers. So I have three colors, that's three points a piece, that's gonna be nine points. Nine and 13 is 22, buys us a little bit of breathing space. Cool, that is building. The only thing left we need to do, just like previous, we need to refill with the color that was bought. And unfortunately, because now that we bought purple, you'll notice that purple is going to be come down here in the bottom. Well, obviously the stone cost is, is printed, but the wisdom cost goes up now, you know, later or the lower it is in priority from zero to three. So we took our uh, speaker die, we built, we're done. It's the AI's turn. However, okay. There is a rule here. It says, if you have already passed, we have not, and the UFO bot has two or fewer dice in the active area of its board, uh, it passes instead of taking an action. So it has two or fewer, but we haven't passed. So that means he takes his turn. Blarg. So it's going to be the blue because the white is the lowest priority. So what happens first? This advances there. And now it's going to move five. One, two, three, four, and five. We have already hit this one. This one, I am not memorizing these, I apologize. It says, and we're looking at that one where my finger is. If possible, choose a color uh, for taking a die uh, with at least one unpaired building. Well, there is one that's pretty simple. We can stop on step one, and that is a red die, so it's going to take this one. It is not on the plus location, so it's just going to take the one. It doesn't get the plus, so it doesn't go up higher in pip value. These will roll over. The UFO bot has told me that it is electing to not roll anything and to have me do all of that, so there's that. And uh, that was a blue die for the special, the blue Bonus is uh, increase one of its discs on the Zodiac track by one. And the priority on that is uh, increase its highest Zodiac position, ignoring any uh, where it is already in the lead. It wins all ties, so in case of a tie, it's considered to be in the lead. Oh, well, I misspoke about that earlier. Well, it currently 
is in the lead on this one, so it's going to ignore that one. So then on these two, then from there, in case of a tie for highest, increase the leftmost of the tied tracks. And then uh, if he's already in the lead on all three tracks, increase its lowest track instead. Okay. Well, by that rationale, it's tied there but trailing here, so he's going to go up on that one, one step. This is cool, and by cool I mean sucks. All right. And the blue die is done. All right, so now we have a decision to make. Speaker die, you never have to use all of your actions, okay? You can pass at any point that you wish to pass. So my thinking here is I could choose to pass. It's five rounds, remember, the game. I could choose to pass, and he would not get to use his speaker die because he would have two or less dice, and I will have already passed. But I don't feel like that's maximizing. And, but let's take a look. So I have a colorless four. A four can take any of the available actions. So there's that. We can only do one of those things of the two gray. If we were to advance on the military track, it would give us a superiority token which would be useful for later for taking an additional action ahead of the AI. That actually seems pretty decent. We could get any of the basic resources, or a resource and a gold. Um, but also looking at this, remember, this is going to turn to a three, that's gonna to turn to a two, and that's gonna to turn to a four. So whatever spot we go to is going to increase the pip value on one of those. Eh. Um, so that first location isn't bad, because that'll be a four, that's turning to a four, that wouldn't be bad. Um, we don't have a population base to get any more there. Dice. I kind of like the idea, uh, but the fact is, we're only going to score one point by increasing our military and then attacking. Attacking only gets us one point. I feel like getting resources probably would be the smarter thing to do. We do have a couple of wisdom in our pocket. And looking at the color dice that we have, I don't think I really want to go to any of those locations other than possibly the blue one. Because again, I don't want to make it more expensive for these dice to go there in wisdom. So what I'm basically trying to say is we could go and get more wisdom. I don't think that's the right thing to do. However, if we were to go there, ah, oh, we don't have the stone, never mind. So we're not going to go to red. So the question is purple or blue, because that's going to go to a four. If we go to purple, we would be able to either get one basic resource. No, we, that's exactly what we do, one of each. Or we go to blue and get three stone. I think, I think actually I kind of talked myself into it. We're gonna go to purple, we'll go there. So I will get one basic resource per the top there. So that's one stone, one wheat, one wisdom. There we go. All right, to go with the two that we had, okay? All right. That works out. All right, we're done, because we don't get to do the bonus action, because colorless. All right, AI's time. So he's using his five. Um, in case of a white die, select the encounter site with the lowest current value, and in, in case of a tie, pick the leftmost tied location. All right, so let's take a look at this. Three, three, two, three, three. So the lowest is going to be the two, so it's going to increase that one because it's using a white die, okay? So he's gonna advance five, one, two, three, four, five, which is going to be military. And again, you all wanna keep seeing this here as I talk about it, so the military stuff, whee, there we go. 
Uh, increase is military position by one. If it's higher than ours, you lose three points. Okay, cool. So increase it by one, and we lose three points. This is fun. Grr. Thanks, David. Okay. Uh, and it doesn't have, let's see. There's no bonus, at least, because it's a white die. So that's a positive. And he's done. So it's our turn. Okay, so let's take a look at what we can do. We have no workers left, so we cannot visit an encounter site. We have not uh, built enough buildings to be able to close a district, so can't do that. We have no gold, so we can't build the tower level. We only have one food. It requires four now for us to grow population. So our only option is to pass. So we flip that over. We are passing. So what does that mean? Okay. So we take that back. We take that back, we take that back, and we take our Archon back. Now, in addition to all of that, now, as Jess liked to say on the Twitch, hey, happy birthday, everybody. Three becomes a four, one becomes a two, and a four becomes a three. There we go, done, okay? That's what happens when you pass. Unless it's a six, then a little bit more go, uh, happens, okay? All right, so the AI, however, let's see here. Let's get this right. Okay, so the UFO, or yeah, the UFO bot just passes. The round ends once you and the UFO bot have both passed, okay. Return and reroll any speaker dice. Uh, from the uh, UFO bots available in exhausted dice area. So he has one speaker die right here. This gets re-rolled. Okay, that becomes a three. Return all dice in the exhausted area of its board to its available dice area. Okay, those move over to there. Uh, if it's a third or fourth round, somebody keep track of this because I will forget. This is round one. Remove two gold from the leftmost district card that still has gold. Well, we're only round one. We're okay. Reset your military track to the beginning of the segment as usual. In other words, we would move back to the most, re or most recent furthest past superiority marker. We haven't moved. Don't need to worry about that. Assign the Zodiac cards the same way. So in other words, whoever is leading... So he gets them all. So that's scary right there. Because if tied, he breaks all ties. I would argue that neither of us have started this one. So I don't think anybody would get that. I need to look that up in the rule book. That you have to have at least started a track to gain it. Let me double check that. It actually doesn't say, and I don't think Rainer is here, but I would argue that since neither of us has passed, has advanced any on this, yes, he breaks all ties, but we haven't started, so I, I would argue that neither of us qualify for the Pisces card, but we both have started on that one and he tied, regardless that I was there first because he wins all ties, apparently because he cheats, he actually gets the Taurus card as well. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. And we remain first done. Now, this die, this die does not get rolled unless it's a five. It just has a birthday. So, hey, 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 it's your birthday. That's a five. There we go. Cool. Done. And now we're first player. That's us. Oh, I like that idea. Good call. So we'll put a gold up here to signify what round it is. That's a good call. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's funny, Lars. Uh, Rainer was here. I know. They still got their Gen Con stuff going on. So he's probably busy with that. That's fair. But I think that just makes sense intuitively that 
whoever's tied gets it, but you have to have started. You're not going to you're not going to score points on something that you haven't started, right? That's kind of basic rules, I would say, for for board games. I think that's general that feels right. All right. So it's our turn. We have four workers. Um Okay. I definitely want to build that blue and that purple building this round. Um, but I also want to get that purple worker. The reason is because when I close uh, a district, I want it to be with the purple die. The reason I want it with the purple die is because A, it's going to have a high pip value, but also it's going to reactivate every purple building that it's adjacent to. That astronomy tower sucks, though, for given what I do um, or what I'm doing. So the blue one's not terrible. So I think I focus on trying to get that built and getting enough food to be able to unlock that so that I can get that purple dye as well. All right, so with that in mind, I need to unlock a population base, which is going to cost four food. I'm going to need, I have one food. I need three stone, I have one stone. So I need stone and food. So if I were, in a perfect world, I would go, ah, it doesn't work. I would need the extra food. So I'm going to have to go to the food location no matter what. And getting an extra die makes sense to do it, so I think it's worth paying the wisdom right now to do it. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to place that there. The difference is one, so I will pay one wisdom. That will advance. I am going to take the three food, and I will get the bonus. And the three food gives us four food, which is what we need. And I will go ahead and take the speaker die. And we have yet to figure out why you would want to take a lower value. Doesn't make sense. So we're done. All right. UFO bot time. We need to roll his dice. Okay. That's good. He moves less. I think it's good. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's see. Uh, so it's going to be the lowest pip value, so it's going to be the red. So first things first, red advances one. Then he's going to build, and again, building here is going to be the top one up there. Uh, it takes a building, let's see, choose a color with at least one unpaired die. He doesn't have any. If still multiple options remain, choose the color it has more power uh, tower pieces of so he's going to choose the orange building so it's going to be this one here so let's just go ahead and build that form huh that'll work he doesn't get to do the bonus or anything like that at least so there's that that will move up Castle comes out. I was hoping he would build the purple. Alas, he is not. Uh, and that is red. Red's bonus. If the military is higher than you, lose three points. Yay. We keep slip sliding away. Okay. Thanks for that. If we weren't, uh, if we didn't lose the three points, he would increase his military by one. Yay. Okay, we're up. <sighs> All right. So we got food. Now we can unlock the population. That seems like a pretty good idea so that we can get that purple four. Which again, we can use it for a turn or two, but also we're going to want it there. And I want to get it before he does. However, that doesn't take 
any dice out there, right? And so going out there, given what we have, we have a th yellow three. Do we want, well, we can't get that die yet until we have a base, so it, mm -hmm. uh, blue, we can afford that to go up one. The five, we can afford to go up any, and the arc, yeah, so I guess we go ahead and increase our population now. Um, since nothing he can do is going to hurt us too, too bad. So we will go ahead and grow our population there. All right. That's going to cost us four food, as you can see there. So the four food goes away. We increase our population. Doesn't matter where it goes on top, but boom, done. Okay, cool. Awesome. We're done. So now for the AI... Uh, the color is orange, red, blue, purple, yellow. So blue before yellow. So that means between, because it's always the lowest pit value, the two will be active. Put it up there, I guess. All right, first things first, that increases. Two. All right, this is a focus action. We haven't encountered the focus action yet. Focus action is this one right here. Okay. Uh, perform one of the above five effects depending on the color of the die selected this turn. If it's white, do the effect of the lowest value encounter site. All right. So. What are, so it is a blue action, as you can see there. So therefore, we are going to increase temple and, and take one. All right. So on the lowest position by two. So it's going to be this one, one, two. Then place the corresponding card next to the UFO bot's board. If it already had it, we would lose five points. He doesn't because, again, I think that makes the most sense. He now has all of them. Yay. And the blue special ability is increase its position of one of its discs on the Zodiac track. This is not great. Uh, its highest position, ignoring any where it's already in the lead. It's in the lead on all of them. Uh, with the highest position, ignoring any where it's already in the lead. If tie for highest, increase the leftmost. So there are two here, so you will increase that one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If the UFO bot is already in the lead on all three of the Zodiac tax, uh, tracks, increase its lowest track. That kind of makes sense, because he scores for all three tracks. So I guess it would make sense to do that. Hey, Alyssa. All right. Wow. I feel like we are getting smoked right now, but we'll see how this goes. All right. Well, I think we stay on target. Although, this is terrifying. Keep going back in points, but we'll see how this goes. I think we stay on target to get our other die. So, we're going to place the yellow three. There, it increases that one. Uh, we go ahead and take the die that we wanted, and we will take a resource of our choice. So, what die did we want? We wanted the purple four, so we'll go ahead and take that. It's going to cost us one wisdom there. All right, we have the wisdom. We're good there. And now we can take a resource of our choice. Well, we have a stone, and we have a wisdom, and I had mentioned wanting the blue building to match up there. The blue building requires zero wisdom, but requires three stone. We have one wisdom and one stone, so it kind of makes sense to go ahead and take another stone. We're done with that. Now, one thing I have not mentioned to y'all is whenever you place a six value die out here, in any of the encounter spots, whether or not it's the same color as the bonus location. You get to do both of the gray actions. So, meaning, if this three were a six, I would get the gold, 
I would get the resource of my basic resource of my choice. I would also get the die, and if it happened to be a yellow six, I would get the bonus. So that's the benefit because you're going to lose that six at the end of the round to become an advisor, which then means your Archon now has a color which allows it to take bonus actions in those given spots, but you're going to lose that die at the end of the round. So, all right. All right, lowest value, gonna be that. So it moves one there, comes over one, two. It's gonna be a tower action. The tower action uh, takes tower piece, uh, most paired dice in its sample area. Well, um, it has one uh, uh, orange and a red, as you see there. Among the tide, take the color it has the most total pips on paired dice. Well, higher pit value is going to be orange, so it's going to take an orange pit or orange tower. Okay, pretty simple on that one. There's one orange left. That's now, uh, would be 15 points, but uh, the scoring's a little bit different for the AI for the end of the game. That is a yellow, uh, so the yellow bonus effect is what? Oh, we lose two points. Awesome, that's done. Not because the pit value, just we lose two points. Yay. Forgot to refill this with a purple die. Be great if we could roll a little bit better than that. All right, have a good one, Murr. Okay, so we have a five, we have a blue four, a purple four. We need stone but we only need one stone. Oh, oh, I like that. That works out really, really well. Okay, yeah, here's what we do. We're gonna use the purple four. Come on up there, rotate that. So first things first, uh, I'm choosing to do the top one. So we're gonna take a stone, a food, and a wisdom. Done. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the bonus action. We'll pay that food we just got to go ahead and build. So we pay the food. Okay, cool. And as mentioned, I want that blue building. So the blue building costs zero wisdom and three stone, which we have, awesome. Well, because that is pretty uh, no-brainer, that's going to go right there, so I need to pay my three stone. And the building says, advance two steps on the mountain temple. Okay, cool. Let's do that. So one, two. We're still tied, but at least there's that. Um, you can spend one gold to advance one step on another temple. Okay, it can't be perfect. Okay. It's, uh, it didn't, it didn't quite plan that, and oh well, not going to be able to do the second part of that, but that's okay, it's okay. I got to do all that, I'm pretty happy with that, I forgot, I have not passed, there we go. Alright, we're done, AI's turn. So, uh, the AI has two dice left, but we haven't passed, so it's going to do the purple, the purple will advance one there. And he will move three, one, two, and three. So he's going to build a building. Building the building. Uh, choose a color with at least one unpaired die. Well, he doesn't have any unpaired dice, so don't need to worry about that. Uh, choose the color it has more tower pieces of. He's really gonna focus on orange now, isn't he? Okay. Oh, shoot. Forgot to refill this with the blue. So the sacred place comes out. He's going to build the castle. There, that will come up. The estate will come out. And that was a purple bonus action. Take the topmost building and place it in the samples area. So he's going to build the yellow as well. Oof. The 
Harbor comes out. Well, the good news is he just made the purple cheaper for me. Um, which really kind of sucks because it's just going to give me one wisdom. Eh, not really what I want, but so be it. That is there. Okay. So what the hell are we trying to do? Ideally, again, it's not great. Um, but getting that purple is going to be two stone and a wisdom. We have the wisdom, so getting the stone there, that seems like a pretty decent idea. And that would allow us to then move up a temple track. So it's going to go four. He's going to get yet another tower piece. Uh. Yeah, I think let's just do the obvious stuff. So we'll place that four. We're good there. It doesn't cost us anything. We'll go ahead and take the three stone, and then we'll pay one of the stone to move up a temple track. So just take uh, two stone then. And for the temple track, I mean, I could... I could make a case of two of these. I could get started on this one, but at least with the Pisces, we would be ahead, whereas everything else we would be losing on. So I think that makes the most sense. I think we'll try that and see. All right, done. So it's his turn. Orange is going to advance that. And it's going to be a four. So one, two, three, four. So the tower, he's taking a tower piece. The tower says uh, it has the most, whatever it has the most uh, paired dice of. Well, he only has, he's tied. And then total pit value, it's going to be orange yet again. So he's taking the very last orange. So orange has no tower pieces left. And the orange bonus was take the highest value speaker die and place it in its pool. So that kind of sucks. So he has another die available. One more action. Unless we were to pass, we're not going to pass. Not yet. So now we can build. So going there with the speaker die, which is at a five to be able to build, not a terrible idea. But what else do we want to do with our Archon at that point? I don't know. I think we, base, we react to what he's going to do. I think that makes the most sense. Again, I'm playing extraordinarily tactically right now, but I think that's okay. Well, solo plus running the stream, etc. So we'll go there. That will boost that. So we can only do one of those two actions. As mentioned, we're going to build there. So we're going to pay the one wisdom for the astronomy tower. The other option, there's no other purple. There is a blue with a couple of red. Hmm. Okay. Well, hold on. Yeah. Okay. So if we get a purple, we would complete this one, which would lock in 15 points for us. And then we would be able to get the couple of gold here in a little bit. So that's good. The other thing is we already have a blue. So looking at the reds, right? If we were, because the blue could work for both of those. And the top building here, oh, wrong one. There we go. Sorry about that. The veteran settlement, and it costs zero um, wisdom and only one stone, says choose one of your unused red freemen, which we don't have any, uh, and gain victory points equal to its value. Afterwards, reduce its value by one. Which, that's kind of awesome, but I don't have any red dice, so that's not great for us right now, but I think in a little bit it would be if we were to take that die, it's two points. 
It's not great. I get that. It, but it is a cheap build. Or we could gain one wisdom. And we have no, uh, we have no advisors right now. So getting a wisdom might not be a terrible idea. Plus it finishes the one that we're working on. So I think we do that. So we'll pay the one wisdom, which is a wash because we're going to gain one and then pay two stone. And that I'm choosing to put right there. So we gain two stone, pay a wisdom, get a wisdom back. Sorry, other way, pay two stone, sorry, for that. So boop, boop, got a wisdom. All right, and now we have this, but we don't get the gold, we don't get the points until we put a die here. We can put any color die there to close it off. But if we want to reactivate a building, we want we then reactivate whatever color die it is, multiply at the end of the game based on the color and number of tower pieces we have. So right now, we have four different color Freeman, so if we put a purple, that's worth 12 victory points and a wisdom. Or, if we put a blue die when we close it off, we would get two on the mountain and spend a gold, uh, no, it's gonna be the purple. All right, that's the end of our turn, though. All right, so now he cheats. Uh, sorry, he goes. Be my attempted humor. So he only has one die left. It's going to be the three. And because it is a white die, uh, the lowest value is the one that increases. So we have a five, six, four, five, five. So the four, so that will increase there, done. And going to move three, one, two, three. So he's going to build a building. And I forgot to refill this with a purple. The Mage's Tower comes out, which says, use the ability of an adjacent building. Fountain of Wisdom. All right, so he is building. Uh, choose a color with at least one unpaired die. Well, again, he, he doesn't have any unpaired dice, as you can see. Uh, choose the color that has more tower pieces. Shocker, it's going to be the estate that he builds because more red or more orange. That says fourth orange. And no special because that is a colorless die, but we will put an orange out. Again, this is the first time I've played with this AI since I just got it this morning, but it's interesting to see him load up on that and how it's going to score at the end of the game. I'm curious. All right, so our turn, we have our Archon left. There's no reason not to use it because he's going to pass. He has no dice left. So what do we want to do? We have two Wisdom. We can't close a district because we have no unused Freeman. We don't want to yet anyways. Uh, we have no gold, so we can't build the tower level, and we don't have food, so we can't grow a population. So we're going to visit an encounter site. So what the hell do we want to do now? Remember, it's an Archon, and he's colorless, so we only get to do one of the top two gray actions. We don't have anything to build. We have almost nothing for resources. We have no stone, so that one's kind of dead, so we're not going to go to red. Uh, the other thing to think about is if we were to go to orange, it would reset that to one, which is useful. We can't build, but we could take three food and getting food. Uh, I don't know what to do. I wish we had stone. If we had stone, we would go and do that. Uh, pay a stone to advance temple track by two, but we don't. You know what? Honestly, I think we go and get food because I'm looking at this purple to be able to advance spending food to be able to advance pips and military, I think we look to do that next turn. So yeah, let's go ahead and throw our Archon up here. There's a bunch of good reasons to do this. One, it resets that to one, that's positive, which is going to help him when he becomes a three. 
uh, getting food to be able to do, like, there's just a lot of good reasons on that. So we'll take the three food. There, done. He's passing, he's out of workers. We're out of essentially everything because we need six food to be able to do that, so we're gonna pass. So our Archon comes back. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh, you too, happy birthday. And hey, it's your birthday. All right, so all of these will go up in pip value now. So from a four to a five, from a two to a three, a three to a four, and a four to a five. Okay. All right, that's not terrible. Okay, so we have passed technically, okay? So when at the end of a round, Reroll this, that becomes a five. This five will come back and it can't roll up to a six because there are only fives. There are two twos, two threes, a four and a five. So this gets rolled, okay, there. All of its dice move over. This is the second round. So now we remove those. Next round, that in the last round, or in the fourth round, and that in the fifth round, it, right? Uh, Zodiac cards, who's leading? He keeps it, hey, we get one. We get the Pisces card, so that's cool. The Pisces card says, you can treat each bonus action as if it were effective gain of gold. So any of these, if I don't really feel great about those, I can just take a gold. So that's kind of cool. And he keeps the last one. We're the first player, and here we go. Okay. So we have that locked in, right? We have that. But I'm looking at this and I'm looking at, uh, oh, I don't need the other blue, do I? I don't. The blue here, is the sacred place, says gain three, six, or 10 victory points for having one, two, or three Zodiac cards. We have one but mm, what we really need are, is the red ones. We need a red die to be able to really make, but it's only two points, so I don't think I need to kill myself on that one. Uh, it is, Eric, um, but this is the one that's not in the rule book. It's one you'll have to down, this is the active AI. London Fog, by the way. Oh, hey, it's almost kickoff time for the Cowboys. Go Cowboys, Alyssa. <clears throat> All right. Um, so building the veteran settlement, we just need one, one uh, stone. I definitely want that veteran's settlement. Even though it's wasteful, it's just a stone to be able to build a building, and that's really useful. That's gonna be potentially 12 points after I build a second one. I don't think I really need to focus too much on getting that red worker, but if we do, that's another three points when we place the purple there. Maybe we do. So getting the three food might not be a terrible thing. Plus we would get the five speaker. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So we'll go ahead and use the three to start, I think. So the three will go there, advance that. Uh, I'll get the three food and the speaker die. So I'll take the five, we'll take the three food. So three and three is six. We got a one, there we go. We're done, cool. All right, AI rolls. All right, so we got a five, six, one, one, and a two. And the priority for colors, again, is going to be orange, red, blue, nope, uh, purple, then yellow, so. The purple will go, 
purple will advance that, will advance one, is going to take a die and choose a color with at least one unpaired building. Well, that could be orange or yellow, because there are unpaired for both of those. If multiple options remain, choose the color it has more tower pieces of. That'd be orange. Okay, so he's gonna take the orange. It is not the plus one, so he's just gonna take the three there. Those will slide over. He's told me he wants me to roll all his dice. I need to roll better, clearly. That is a purple die, so the bonus for the purple is take the topmost building and place it in the UFO Bops samples area. That is the red one. So that means glory to Rome to you, UFO bot. I hate you, David. Damn it. Ah, that stinks. Because now it costs three wisdom and a food for the outpost. All right. Say la vie. What can you do? And that is the purple. Grrr. Hey, JT. Um, so we have the six food. We could get another work, uh, grow our population. I think we do. I think we go ahead and do that. We'll grow our population. So it's gonna cost us six food, because that's the next one there. We have six food. This may be a terrible idea. I'm kind of going off uh, plan, but we'll see how it goes. So we're done. UFO bot, now we'll activate the yellow there. So that will become a six there. It will advance one, which is a focus and the focus is the yellow is going to be a tower action. The tower action, and here, to be clear, right there. And the tower action there is uh, whatever it has the most paired dice of in its sample area, which would be orange, but there are no orange discs, tower t uh, towers to take. So therefore, um, take the color it has the most total pips of. So it's going to be a red in that case. So he takes the red tower disc, put that there, done. And that is a yellow bonus. Yellow bonus says, hey, Edward, you lose two points. Awesome, thanks for that. He's done. Oh. Now here's the thing. Hmm. It's worth three points. I don't know if that's worth it, but variety is the spice of life. So let's, again, we're playing kind of tactically, but I'm okay with that. So if you take a look at all of those, you'll notice there's a couple of sixes, a couple of fives, and a two. I do have some fives and a four. I have no six, but I do have my Archon. And I think uh, that was a shoot. What number was that? I just bumped that and somehow I flipped it. I think it was a five. I think that was a five. I think so. I know it wasn't a six. I'll put my Archon there and that's just gonna allow me to grab a die I'm going to choose to do the bottom one, and I will pay the two here to be able to take the red die. It cost me two wisdom. Done. All right, that was a five. Cool. Thank you, Lars. All right, UFO bot's turn. He'll do the two because it's the lowest value. 
So blue advances. He moves two, one, two. That's going to be another tower. God, this is terrifying. Um, and the tower, I believe, is going to be a red again, right? So most paired dice which is going to be red because it can't do orange because there's no orange left, so he's gonna take red. And that is a blue die here. So the bonus for the blue is increase its disc on one of the Zodiac tracks. It's the highest position that he's not in the lead in. Well, he's now in the lead, but he doesn't take the card right now, so at least there's that. Our turn. Gives us gold and the 15 points. We could wait for that. I think we wait to close this till next turn. So we're going to want purple. But I, oh, but I want the gold to be able to do that. Um, we have five actions there being able to take. Now that the red is all the way down here, that really hurt us because it's just so much as far as resources go. So I think now it's just maximizing resources, trying to get as much as we can without having to spend to be able to do actions. So six, two, five, one, six. That would cost us if we match up for bonus actions, right? This doesn't, this does, and this does. However, no, never mind. So the only ones we can take that don't cost us wisdom are the orange and the yellow, but we don't get to do the bonus, bonus actions. So grabbing the gold wouldn't be terrible on this. And grabbing food. Eh. Oh, I forgot to. Uh... There we go. There. And that would give us another gold. You know, it's not a terrible idea. So let's go ahead and start with that. So we'll place that there. And remember, because we have Pisces right now, saying you can treat a bonus action as gain of gold. So instead of a basic resource, and we'll do the top one, so we'll get two gold and a basic resource. That seems uh, awfully useful. So there's the two gold. Now the basic resource, what do we need? We get the one stone that we need for the outpost. Might not be a terrible idea. The other idea, and then we would need three wisdom to be able to get it as it is right now. The other thing is, do we want to take any of that? Nah, I think we just take the stone. I think that's a good idea. Boom, done. All right. Yeah, I like that. All right. So red, oh, sorry, that was done. So red will go up one. I also forget to look at that. Um, that really only helped us, honestly, because the two, eh, Five or a six is essentially the same. The orange is going to roll over to a three. That doesn't help us here. So, mm. all right. So that went up. Going to move five. One, two, three, four. And another focus. And the focus, that is a red die, is going to be military. That's going to hurt. Um, increase the UFO's military position by one. If it's higher than yours, lose three points. I'm pretty sure it is. Go back three. One, two, three. Remember, if we reach zero, we lose. Okay. And the bonus for red... Uh, this game hates me. 
If its military is higher than yours, lose three points. Okay. One, two, three. Down to six. <clears throat> All right. Done. We have a ton of actions. I'm not in a rush to get that now. Although, we do want the purple. He's not going to take any purple, so we're not in a rush to take them. What do we need? Well, we're going to need wisdom. Wisdom is a red die. Oh, be care. Oh, God. Okay, so this is an interesting dilemma. Technically, I could have two wisdom with the gold because those are wild. These fives can only go there or there. So the two could go there. And that would give us a basic resource and a goal. Yep, that's what we're going to have to do or else I'm not going to be able to use my dice. So I will put the two there. That's legit. And I'll do the top. I'll take a wisdom and a gold. Okay. Done. Because we don't get the bonus because it doesn't match in color. The six is orange. That will go there. You move six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, which is taking a die. Here. And that is uh, choose a color with at least one unpaired building. Well, that's going to be yellow per, or orange because there's two and three, so orange or red out of all those. Uh, if multiple options, choose the color that it has more tower pieces of. Oh, hey, that'll be orange, and now orange will be completely paired up. It's not the plus one, so he doesn't add one. So. There. Let's, I'm not rolling the dice. Uh, I, I really should have gotten a whatever. doesn't matter. Uh, that is an orange for the bonus effect. The bonus effect right there says take the highest value speaker die. All right, and put it into its available pool. Well, it, there is still one there. Grr, I thought that was going to be his last action. Damn it. This is brutal. Oh, uh... Like a winning score in the in the passive uh, bot is 180. I'm at six. I would like to point that out. Okay. Although we are going to score a fair bit of points here, but I'm just saying. So now that we have wisdom, these fives could go to the six spots and be able to pay for the ability to do that. However. That is three wisdom. That would be there. That would give me us one. We need to be able to go there. That would give us three. We're one short. Oh, man. Everything is so interwoven so well in this, and there's so many things that I want to be able to do. I need to focus on being able to build. I need buildings because I don't want to close this yet, even though this is going to get us 15 points when I close. Uh, actually, check that. It's going to get us 30 points when I place that there. But right now, I'm trying to delay on that, and it's all about efficiency of action. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place that there. That's going to cost us one wisdom, which is the one wisdom we have there because five to a six, and at least it resets that. Or it gives us the wisdom. 
Then if we were to go there, reset, and then the food, and then we'd be able to build in there. Yeah, that'll work. So we're just gonna take the three wisdom with that. Done. His turn. Whatever one is the lowest will now move. So six, three, one. No, oh, it's gonna be the one. So that's there. Gonna move three. One, two, three. Another tower piece. <sighs> Most paired can't be, uh, so that's gonna be red, because three, that's good, and one there, and none there, so it's gonna be the red. The red is now empty. That is four and four. All right, done. Hey, at least no bonus, because it's a speaker die, so that's good. Uh, the scoring on the outpost is, uh, uh, it's just, or not scoring, but the it's move one space on the military track, or perform an attack. So we would at least be able to get a superiority token. We're still going to be behind him, but what can you do? All right, next action. I have three. Spend that there. I think I can do that, right? That works. I think so. We're going to go ahead... Use the purple five there. So we owe one of our three wisdom paid. That advances. We're gonna do the top one. Unfortunately, I planned on doing the bottom, but well, things change. So that's a stone, a wheat, and a wisdom. So that's done. Then the bonus action we will actually do as it says, pay a wheat and build. So paying a wheat there. We're going to go ahead and build the outpost. The outpost is three uh, wisdom and a stone there. So three wisdom and a stone. And the outpost looking at that needs to go adjacent to the blue, and I don't think it really matters. Ah, uh, yes, because I want to reactivate that one. So that will go there. And now that we're built, we're gonna be building up this way, so we'll keep it there. All right, so it says, uh, move one space on a military track or perform an attack. Well. An attack doesn't do us any good, so moving, advancing one, we get a superiority token. Hey, finally, awesome. So that means we can take another action whenever we want. Okay, so we're done. He's passing, so we get to take another action without taking the, using the superior, superiority action. Uh, mm. We have a blue five. We have three gold, which I know we're going to activate purple. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and build the tower level. Building the tower level costs us one gold. And it's going to be a purple because purple is what we're going to be placing over there for a die. So I will take one of these that cost one and now they're done. He's passed. So it's just our turn until we're done. And you know what? It's burning a hole in our pocket, and I want to, he's not going to build yellow, or purple, I mean. He will build yellow first. Call me paranoid. We have two more gold. We have two purple. So we're going to spend two gold to go ahead and do the same thing. So now, whatever purple dice we place out there will be multiplied by three for end game scoring. Okay. No, Christopher, the only way the game ends is five rounds. We're in round three. All right. So now it's our turn again. So what do we do? We can go to any of these four 
uh, encounter spots and not pay a wisdom, which is good because we have no wisdom. Oh, and I need to, what color was that? That was red. Writing grounds come out. The writing grounds say, move two spaces on the military track and gain a stone or food for each player with lower military strength. So in other words, it would tie me with him, but we lose ties. But still, that might not be a terrible thing. But that's going to be to be able to get the second one there. So three wisdom and two stone. I have one stone, so we need three wisdom. Maybe it's not a terrible idea to go ahead and grab the wisdom now. I don't have a really good reason to not since we can't go there because we don't have the wisdom. So yeah, I think we will. We'll place the five there, advance that, and we'll just grab the three wisdom. We're out of actions of stuff we can do at this point, so we're passing. So all these guys come home. This is the most workers I've ever had at one time, by the way. Everybody has a birthday. Three turns to a four, a five to a six, a four for a five, two to a three, and the five to the six. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. He has a speaker die, the speaker die rolls. This will come back, that will roll because it's a five. All his dice become active. It's the third round. So we remove those two gold. Military would move back for me to the most recent superiority uh, marker. So it did. That's as far back as it needs to go. His doesn't move. And it's our turn. All right. So now, at the end of this round... I am going to lose this and this if I have not put them out as seats of power because they will become advisors, which means our Archon then be gets the bonus ability of whatever color advisor it becomes. However, I'm planning on using this as a seat of power, and I'm going to do that probably as my first action because I want the points because we're getting dangerously close to um, losing. So, uh, uh, that's it has to be on a unused worker or freeman that you use to go into the seat of power, i.e. close a district. So that's what we're gonna do for the very first action is close a district. So I'm going to choose this one here. So he comes out of his population base and will go into one area that is entirely enclosed there. In addition to that, it matches that right here. So I'm going to get the two gold here. In addition to that, I activate every building that's adjacent to it that shares that color. So here is going to be purple and purple. So those two are going to get reactivated. Gain one wisdom plus an additional wisdom for every advisor I have. I have no advisors, so I just get a base of one wisdom. Okay, cool. Done. Then, gain three victory points for every color among your freemen. That is no longer a freeman. That's a uh, seat of power. So that one doesn't count, but how many different colors do I have? I have four, so that's 12 points. 12 to 18. In addition to that, I'm going to score the higher value because it's the first time I have done this. So that's going to get me 15 points because it's the first time I've matched that pattern. So 15 and 18 is 33. That's a little bit of breathing room. If I were to build another pattern of this, so let's say I had purple, purple, blue, and a blank here, I would then get the lower value, which is eight. If somebody else in a multiplayer did this for the first time, they wouldn't get the gold because there's no gold, but they would score the 15 as well. Rinse and repeat, okay? So at least that's done. I lost the worker, but now, also, the other thing that this is going to be is this is going to be six right now times three. That's going to be another 18 points at the end of the game. 
If I get another tower, it'll be another six points, so it'd be 24, So, which is kind of what I'm hoping to do, as well as put another purple here, which will reactivate that when I close that off, when I get that as a red. So I'll get points for that plus that with a multiplier, but I have to get a purple, and that purple currently sucks. So I'm hoping he takes that purple, okay? Oh, at the end of the round, thank you. And yeah, he steals Pisces from me. That's right, because he's ahead, tied, he wins ties, he's ahead, there you go. Oh, and the Agora, thank you. When you close a district containing the Agora, gain a stone, a food, or a wisdom. And that includes that, so good call. Uh, what do we want? We have no food, we have one stone. That's gonna need a second stone. Let's go and grab a stone. There we go, good call. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. So that is our first turn. Now, that's the end of our turn. We do have a superiority token. Is there anything that we feel desperately important to do before he messes things up for us? So he hasn't rolled yet. And when he builds, let me look at this. When he builds a building with at least one unpaired die, he doesn't have any. Whatever he has the most pieces of, well, he's uh, tower pieces, so he's tied between those. It'd be closer to the top, which would be the orange building. So if he, if he builds, he's gonna build the orange building, which would make this cheaper. So, and that's the one we want. So I think we're safe to wait on building. I do want another purple, but God, that one pit value is terrible. I don't feel like there's anything vital that we need to do before he goes, so I'm willing to risk it. Okay, so if I'm willing to risk it, it is his turn. So he's gonna roll his dice. Well, technically I'm rolling for him, but he doesn't mind. Uh, and the tiebreaker order, you would think I would have this memorized by now. I do not. It's orange, red, blue, purple, yellow. So orange, red. There. And blue before yellow. So it's going to activate in that order, top to bottom. Okay. So the blue is going to go. That's actually not terrible. So that goes. It's going to move two. One, two. Uh, that sucks. The military action is uh, increased by one. If he's higher, and he is, he, we lose three points. So he activates one, and we lose three points. We would be at three had we not done that, just to be clear. And the blue bonus action is he's going to increase uh, his disc by, uh, let's see, his highest. He's already in the lead in all of them. So, increase the leftmost if tied, but it is that one. Then we'll, we'll go up. He's done. So that's the blue. All right. So he's going to take a die next turn. And that is with at least an unpaired building, so that would be yellow or red. And that would be red. So he's going to take the red die next turn. Okay. I don't necessarily, I really don't think I want the red die. So I really wanted him to take the purple, but that's not going to happen. Okay. So what the hell are we trying to do? I didn't pay, mm, did I pay my two gold when I took that? Somebody check, when I took that third, or well, the second tower, but the third one here, did I pay my two gold? I don't think I did. Oh, no, I did, because I got the two gold from closing that just now. Never mind. Okay, so we need one more gold to be able to take another tower piece, which is going to be really important for us. Um...
and I desperately want that Leo card. Okay. So if I want that, I need to hammer this. Okay. So I want to buy this, build it. I want to be ahead of him on the Leo track, which means I need to do this twice. Because that is, whenever you close a district, add two to the seat of power. So in other words, if I were to get this die, it would graduate to a two at the end of the round. And then when I close it, it would be a four. So that's not a terrible idea. I also want to build this, which is going to get me two more gold when I close that. But not until I close it. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. So let's, if I grab the speaker die, it's a four. That's bonus actions. If I put the purple, I can't build, yeah, I can build that. All right, let's do that. We'll go and use our orange four, go there. Uh, I will build and take a speaker die. So. I will take the four. I will build the writing grounds, as we've talked about. I have three wisdom and two stone. That is going to go right there. And if you notice, blank, blue, red, red, blank, blue, red, red. If I were to, how is it? It is turn it this way and flip it, I would be able to make that configuration with that. Yeah, that works. And here, so I don't forget, Chariot Field will come out. Chariot Field, gain two points for each of your red buildings and two for each of the red Freeman you have. That's four points, uh, six points, that's cool. But the writing grounds, Say, move two spaces on the military track and gain a stone or food for each player with uh, lower military strength, which is none. But hey, we advance two. Wee. Okay. Plan on closing that with purple because that way I would get, uh, I would still get another 12 points for that. Which I need that purple, but that purple is so terrible. Um... Yeah, that was, that was not terrible, though. So we bought, we got the speaker die. I'm good with that. Okay. All right. So he's going to go yellow. The yellow is going to advance one there. One, two. As I mentioned, he's going to grab a die. And the die that he's going to grab is uh, with an unpaired building, which there's a yellow and a red. But the choice there is whatever he has the most tower pieces of, he has four. Uh, these are all paired, plus these out of orange, but nonetheless. Uh, that's going to be the red die. He will take that. It is not a plus spot. That one, it's not that, so it doesn't go up in pip value. That goes over. The red comes out. That goes there. And that is yellow. The bonus action is, hey, we lose two points. To be clear, we would be down to one point at this point had we not closed that. Hmm. All right. God, that purple sucks. No matter how many, how many times I look at it, it's terrible. Ah, that was it. That action right there allows me to spend food to increase the pip value. That's it. So now I do want that purple. It's going to cost me, okay, let's get this right. I need wisdom to be able to get it. So the yellow is going to go here. And that would be the two wisdom to go, oh, I... Nope, I'm going to wait on that. And then I need food. 
So I have yellow. Orange doesn't matter. So if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and grab the food now since it's the right value. I have the four speaker die. That will go there. I'm just going to grab the three food. There it is. Now I have a plan. I like that. Because now that I have the food, I'm going to be able to go here with the yellow five to be able to get the die. Spending two wisdom. I have one and I can get a second right there or gold, but it'll be a, a wisdom to grab this. I then use the purple die to do that to increase the pip value to four. So that's two. And then I spend, I don't have stone. I'm going to need to go get stone here to then be able to go here twice to increase this twice to be able to grab the Leo card so that that four that I've now turned this into by upping it by three values into a six so that the six is there and that's 12 times eventually four 48 points. Okay, there you go. Huh. That should have moved over. Again, it's intertwined, which is what you kind of want. So the red will increase to there, which is not ideal, but that's okay since three, four, yeah. One, two, three, four. Now it will increase pip value for that, and that is uh, takes a die with at least one unpaired building. All three of those are paired. All two of those are paired. That is not. That's going to be the yellow. So the yellow, the good news is it just became cheaper. That will go there. And that is a red, uh, if his military is higher than yours, score three or lose three points. And there's where we would have lost had we not closed that. Okay, that's done. Whew. Order of operations. We now want to grab that die or do we want, oh, the wisdom's only one. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So now we'll place that there rotates that. I will take the die and because uh, I no longer have Pisces, I guess that'll be a basic resource. Boo. So I will take that crappy one. And which basic resource do we want? That's going to be food. That jacks that up. I need stone. Stone. Done. His turn. Purple's going to go up one, which not the end of the world because that purple's not going to get used for that. Not going to worry about it. Okay, so moving four. One, two, three, four. That is a focus action. And the focus for purple is he's going to build. Okay, so building a die, uh, a color with at least one unpaired die. So that, to be clear, is okay. Uh, paired, so everything is paired now. There are three buildings, three orange, two red, one yellow. So everything is paired. Um, so it would be purple or blue. Uh, more tower pieces tied. Uh, pick the building closer to the top uh, of the offer. So as it is, purple or blue, blue is closer to the top. He builds the blue. So blue will refill. That is an obelisk. Gain victory points based on how many obelisks you have in your city. All right, and that is a purple. The purple bonus is take the topmost building, place it in his area. So that'll be a yellow now. And the quarry, get a stone plus one for every uh, empty adjacent space. And that is done. 
And what color die did he take? That is, oh, that's me, the purple. I forgot to fill it. That was there. Okay. Stay on target. We could do the red now, paying the one. And that would get us another gold for a wisdom and a stone. Yeah. I think I wait on that. I could go purple, that costs the wisdom, and three food, and that becomes a four. I guess I do, ooh. I can't put the purple up there, okay. Let me make sure. That lets me do all of those. That makes sense. Let's go ahead and use our blue six. I think so, because it gets us all of that. Yeah, I think so. So our blue six is gonna come over here. It's a six, so I get to do both the gray. And it's blue, I get to do the bottom. So yay. So I'm gonna take three stone. We'll just do these in order, I think. So three stone, good. The next one is increase our military and do an attack, finally. So increase our military by one. There, we cross the superiority marker. We get another superiority marker. And now the attack. I get a food. And then I get one point for every superiority marker I've crossed. That's two. Plus one for every uh, opponent I'm ahead of. It's none, but hey, it's two points. Okay. Now I can pay a stone for... Oops, sorry. I pay a stone to be able to do the bottom. Go up one track, one uh, temple track. And the only one that I think makes sense right now is Pisces. So I will go ahead in Pisces. That is done. Now I can take one additional action. He's going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to build. I don't care about that. And the orange special is he's going to take a speaker die. Do I don't I do care. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. Oh, he's going to go up the temple track. What he's not ahead of. Ah, oh, son of a... You know what? Instead of doing that one then, I'm actually going to move... That one. That'll cause him to move up Taurus, and I don't care about Taurus. I'm okay with that. I'm looking a couple turns in it, uh, looking ahead. Uh, I'm not sure, Alyssa, and we're going to be playing this again on Tuesday for multiplayer. Do I want to take another action right now? Does it matter? Do I spend? I don't think I spend them, so no, I'm done. So he's going to go there. That's going to advance that. He's going to move at five. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to build. And when he builds uh, with an unpaired die. No, no, no. What he has the most tower pieces of, which would be orange or red. And that is closer to the top of orange or red. That would be orange. That's his fourth orange. There we go. And then, if 
for the orange bonus, highest available speaker die, if any. So that comes out and that is done. Okay. So now I want to do the red. The bonus, I would just take, I don't have that. Son of a. So. I need to take this twice. So it makes more sense to do it now. Yeah. I'm losing the bonus on the bottom. Oh. Oh, but I have to do it twice to be able to take Pisces, right? Or is it, no, it's Leo I need. Right, yeah, 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 right, Leo. And I have to take it twice, so I lose that once. It's worth it. There, I pay one difference in wisdom, which is my only wisdom. I'm going to do that one, which is pay a stone and advance two. One, two, and take the Leo card. I forget, I'm taking the card, so I don't need to do that right now. Okay. Right, so if I did that. So the next, I will spend a superiority marker at this point to take another action. And that action is going to be with the Archon to go there. And I'm not positive I need to, but it gives makes it more comfortable to do so. So there, and now I'm going to spend three food to up the value of an unused Freeman three times. So from a one to a four. So I'm gonna spend three food, and that turns that one into a four. Now, even though I have another superiority marker, I cannot use it because I just used one right now, okay? Um, all right, so now, yeah, whew, that will happen. Uh, that is going to up the lowest value one, which is going to be the blue because it's a colorless. He's going to move three, one, two, three. All right, so this one, says he's going to increase one of his zodiac, zodiac track by two. The lowest zodiac position. His lowest zodiac position, as you all can see, is going to be on the C track. There. So he's going to increase that by two. And place the corresponding card next to his board. If he already has the board, which he does, we lose five points. One, two, three, four, and five. Thanks for that. But no bonus action. All right. So now it's our turn. We're going to close a district again. So closing the district, we have a four. The four is going to come out there like so. However, Every time you close a district, add two to its C to power die up to a maximum of six. Well, I'm pretty sure four plus two is, you guessed it, six. Awesome. So that's good. Now I activate all the purple buildings around, which in this case is just the artist parlor. Uh, it says three points for every uh, color among your freemen. Okay. I have one, two, three, four colors. That's 12 points. 1, 2, 24 to 36, done. And, and I close this. So we got that one. So we take those two gold. In addition to the two gold, we're going to score the 12 points associated with it. So 12 is to 48. That's a little bit better. Plus, that's going to be 12 times 3 eventually. Well, it's going to be more than that, but I digress. So I'm done. That's my turn for uh, closing the district. His turn. He passes. He's out of actions. We are not. We have three uh, tow purple tower pieces, so that's going to cost us three gold. We have four. So there's three gold. We're going to go ahead and take another purple. That's now four times 12. That's 48 points, 
in the bag for the end of the game. I really want that last one for 12 points. So now the problem is it's going to cost us four gold. We have one, so we need three more gold. But we're done. We can't really do anything else, so we're going to pass. When we pass, we take our workers back. All right, so at the end of a round, he returns this, and this gets rolled. This four will become a five. Those all move out there. Uh, after the third and fourth round, remove the two gold from the, so that's it for those as far as bonus gold. Reset the military back to the lowest spot that you just passed. Superiority marker, that's done. Uh, he gets the Zodiac, he gets the Zodiac, he gets the Zodiac, so he gets them all. But we had it when we needed it, that was the important thing. And it's now the fourth round, we have two rounds left. So now that we've done that, what the hell are we trying to do? I mean, we could build more buildings to be able to uh, score some of that again. We have the red, so we would need two orange buildings. The orange is down here, so there's that. Um, and theoretically, we could try and grab another purple. We own Leo because we took that action, which says you take the card even if you're not leading when you move up too. All right, so it's our turn. What are we trying to do now? Oh, shoot, I forgot to age my, uh, my workers. This is important, first time we've done this. This six can't become a seven, so it becomes an advisor. So now our, uh, our, ugh, our Archon now has the blue special ability whenever it goes to a blue space. If I were to get another blue that ages out, it does not go here. Instead, it looks at the leftmost uh, filled spot and score that many points, it goes back into the supply. But as it is, four becomes a five, happy birthday. Three becomes a four, five becomes a six done. Okay. So that yellow, I mean, we have a couple options. We can either try and build up a tower to be able to close an area this round with yellow, which seems ambitious to be able to multiply. That'd be worth 12 points, right? Because six times two. Um, we have one gold. We could buy the other yellow. So there's that. Um, have a good one, Chip. Uh, or it becomes an advisor at the end of the round, and we get to do all the cool things with it. I don't know. So this is the fourth round. All right, but let's make some quick decisions. Let's get this going. Uh, Yeah, let's just use it. I think that I think that's better use of the R stuff. So a six here, we get to do all three of them. So it's going to be a gold, two basic resources, and a die of our choice. Or we wait until we get some wisdom so we can get that purple. Ah, it seems like a good idea. So let's... Wait on that. Whoop. We need more dice, so we need wisdom. Choose our our gore is blue. Ah, damn it! Oh, the pip values just aren't working for us right now, are they? Is it worth spending a gold? 
man, that's expensive. To be able to increase our military. I don't know what to do. Sorry, guys. Oh, two points. Back. My bad. Um, Yeah, you know what? I think I'm overthinking it. I'm going to use my Ar Archon there, which it has the blue special ability. So I'm going to take two stone and spend, or three stone, spend one of it to move up one of the temples. And I will move up that one. And I might as well move up that one. Done. Okay. His turn. Three, three, four, four, and five. And the order priority is orange, red. That will go there. So it's orange. That goes there. That's helpful. And advances three, one, two, three. So the military, military increases one. He's ahead. I lose three points. One, two, three. And the orange special ability is he takes the highest value speaker die, which sucks. More actions for him. Done. Our turn. Now that he has reset the orange. And I do want to build, so it makes sense to go ahead and do that now. That will go there. I will take the other speaker die. I'm going to build. I'm going to build the mage's tower. I'm not worried about those anymore. I'm more worried about uh, just trying to score the most points possible and being able to close off another area. So it's going to cost me three stone and no... Uh, Wisdom. So this is going to go right there, which says use the ability of an adjacent building. And that adjacent building is going to be the artist parlor. Gain three points for every color among your freemen. So, I mean, one, two, and three. So that's nine points. I suppose I could have waited until I got another. I digress. Nine to 52. Done. And I already got the speaker die. I am done. UFO, blue will advance one, he goes three, one, two, three. The focus on a blue is going to be temple and take a card, which means I'm going to lose the points. The temple that he is furthest behind, or the lowest position, and lowest position, those two are tied. Uh where I'm the lowest, still tied, leftmost. So he increases that by two. And he takes the card, but he already has the card. So I lose five points. One, two, three, four, and five. Done. And it's a blue bonus, which increases the Zodiac by one, whichever is the highest. He's in the lead on all of them. And highest would be that one. Check that. If he's already in the lead on all three, increase the lowest track instead. So that would be this one, because points for him, he's going to score all three. Now he's done. All right. 
So we built that. We need one more. Might as well try and get another purple if we can. It's a Fountain of Wisdom. Uh, take a Wisdom and set any mothership to one value. So that's not terrible. So how do we do that? That's three Wisdom and a stone, but we also need a purple die. So we're going to need Wisdom, and I don't need any stone because I have stone. So Wisdom would be here, but unfortunately that would cost me a Wisdom, which I don't have. I could go there to be able to get one of each, which might not be a terrible idea. Let's do it. So we'll place the speaker die there. That bumps up. I'm just going to take one of every basic resource. So a food, a wisdom, and a stone, and I'm done. AI's turn. We go in this order. The red will jump up. Goes four, one, two, three, four. Military track. He increases by one. He's in the lead. I lose three points. It's red. Military, if it's higher than yours, lose three points. It is one, two, three. That's done. Our turn. I need wisdom now, which that now becomes more expensive because now it costs two to, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, I hate you. Um, now I think it makes sense, but I'm gonna need more wisdom to be able to take that die. So if I go there, I get two wisdom. That gives me three to be able to take this die. And I'm not going to do it until the next round, so I think that works because I want to build that, which I need more wisdom for next turn. I think that's okay. It's only a three value. Be careful with that. Oh, that's so valuable to be able to take all of that in one turn, though. Ah! Other idea is I could place the red there and just take one of each. It gives me four. I would need one. I'm still short to be able to do that, and I'm short to be able to do that. <sighs> Purple is going to advance one, so if I'm going to do it, I probably ought to do it now. Terrible. Or do I not take the purple die this turn? Because I don't need it because I'm not going to lock it in this turn. Maybe I take something else because I have two slots. That kind of makes sense. Maybe I don't overthink it. What color do I not have? I don't have a blue. So if I took the blue, that would score me more points for that. That actually makes sense. Okay. Fine. I'll do that. Took me a while to figure that out. It's a solo game. It happens. So all three of them. So that's a gold, and that's going to be two wisdom. And I'll take a die. I'll take the freebie. That. Those slide over. It makes that cheaper now. And the blue die comes out. There. And that rotates. All right. UFO. Four. Purple goes up. One, two, three, and four. That's going to be uh, the lowest zodiac. Whichever he's the lowest on, if tied, where my position is lower. Here, tied, two spots. He already has it. I lose five points. There we go. Done. And then the purple bonus, he takes the topmost building. So the red will go there. And 
that's done. He has those two left. I want the... Do I care what building? I just realized. Do I really care what building I build? I kept thinking purple to be able to activate it. It gives me a wisdom, but do I need that? If I don't care what it is, I could build a farm in that corner. So if that's the case, I want that to grow up there. Hey, it's okay, buddy. If I don't care, I might as well take the cheap build. But now I, I could get the purple. He's going to take a die. I'll let him do that. As long as it's not going to be the purple one, that's all that matters. With at least one unpaired, so that would be not purple. He'll take anything but purple, potentially. So I don't want to take a die this turn. If I don't want to take a die this turn, what do I want to do? I could spend... It's going to be on a four or less, which means here, here, or here. I might as well pair up the blue. I guess that's what we do. Did not mean to make that rhyme. All right, so that goes there. I will, I would get a wisdom in two points or three stone. I'll take the three stone. I think I'll be able to make better use of that, I think. There, and then I will spend a stone to advance on one temple track. And Leo is the one I want again. It's not yet, but I will advance that one, and I'm good. Done. There. His turn. He goes five yellow advances. Oops, sorry. Yellow advances one and five here. One, two, three, four, and five. He takes a die. Choose a color with at least one unpaired building. So it could be yellow, could be red, could be blue. If still tied, choose the color it has more tower pieces of. That'd be red. So he takes that one. These slide over. Red. There. That's a yellow. The yellow bonus is, hey, you lose two points. Okay, thanks. He's done. Now I want to take that. So now, I'll do this, which advances that. I just want the die. The die is going to be that one. So it's going to cost me two wisdom, and that three will go right there. Done. His turn. He'll go there. And the lowest, 5, 2, 6, 3, 5, is going to be that. Advances 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, military. That is increase 1. He's ahead of me. I lose 3. He's ahead of me. I lose 3 points. 1, 2, 3. It's colorless. No bonus action. He's done for the round. For us, we have this 3. It's going to grow up to a 4. Hmm. 
I don't really have anything great to do with it, so I'm going to build a farm up here, advance that. Building a farm is free. It takes the action, but I don't pay anything else. So I don't want him to take any more stuff, so I'll take the red. You don't pay the wisdom and you don't pay the stone. So I flip it over to the farm side there, and now I'm able to close that off. Done. And I'm going to pass at this point. I'm done. Okay, so I take my workers back. Four becomes a five. Three becomes a four. Five becomes a six. Four becomes a five. Six becomes an advisor again. So this six will come down. Now my Archon has both those colors. The four becomes a five out here. Purple gets rolled there, there. This gets rolled there. And all his dice, this is the fifth round. There's nothing to remove up there. Nothing happens and that's it. So now I want Leo again. So with that being the case, I've punted on the, I think so. Yeah, we're gonna take back-to-back -back actions. So I'm gonna use my Archon to start. My Archon will go there, which turns that. I'm just going to do the stone up a temple two tracks and take the card. So I'll spend one stone, temple two tracks, or two steps. I'll take the Leo and Leo, every time I close a district, add two to its seat of power. Well, I'll go ahead and use my superiority marker and I'll close a district. So that four will go there, becomes a six. Yeah, it's worth sacrificing the three points just to make sure I get it done. Um, I could get the yellow first. I hear you, but I would rather... I'll sacrifice the three points Oh, it's six points. Fine. All right, instead of closing it, I won't, I will roll the dice, so to speak. And I will use, I use, red five to go there and I'll get a new die which will be a yellow five and that'll cost me my one wisdom done can't be a six there we go all right his turn oh and I'm going don't worry I'm going to build a farm to close that as well should I have done a yellow and st I couldn't, I couldn't afford it. That's fine. So his turn. All right. So orange advances one. He goes one space. He's going to build a building. What was that? That was red needs to get filled. So he is going to build Unpaired die, no, no, yes, it's going to build the red. That will go there. Chariot field, but we're not really caring about too much on the buildings at this point. And orange special ability is he's gonna take the highest value speaker die. There, and that's done. Now, now I will go ahead and close that. That four, because of Leo, becomes a six. I activate all the purple buildings around there. Gain three points for every color among my freemen. That is one, two, three, four, that's 12, but I get to use the ability of an adjacent, so that'll be 24 points for those. 
So 24 and 31 is 55. Done. His turn. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see. You're saying had I built it there and closed that off. Exact same thing, but I get an extra resource. That makes sense. I'll get a wisdom. I get that. Good call, William. All right. All right. So two yellow moves. Goes two. One, two. He takes a focus action, and that's a yellow. So he's going to get a tower piece, as you can see right there. The tower is most paired dice in the area. So let's see. There are no orange. There are no red. And that would be paired. That would be yellow. He's going to take the yellow. Pretty simple on that one. There. The yellow special ability is, hey, I lose two points. Done. And now I want that purple, so, and I need, I want purple and gold. So I want that purple die, and I want the, and I want gold. So that purple die, I need wisdom. Got it. There it is. Because this is the last round, so there, we're matched up, good. I will take the wisdom for that. Then I will take another die. That'll be this. That cost me two wisdom, including the one I just got there. I will take the purple two. Done. I'm done. His turn. Red will advance one. Going to move three spots. One, two, three. He's going to take a die and add one uh, with at least one unpaired building. Oops, sorry. So that is what? Yellow, not red, the orange. It's gonna be orange, because he has the most pieces. So what color did I take? I took purple. There, he's going to take orange. That goes there. Orange comes up over. That's the last orange. And that is a red. If his military's higher, you guessed it. Move back three points. All right. He's done. Our turn. We need to build and close. And ideally, whatever I do, do not let me use this purple too. I'm not allowed to use it. So I will, and I need to build one, right? Oh, that works out really well. I got the rest of my game figured out. There, we'll go there. I'm going to do the middle one, spend my two food that I have to add pip values. So from two to four, done. His turn. going to use the five. The purple moves up one. He moves five. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. Increase his lowest zodiac position. Well, it's going to be this one. And it's not ignore ties, right? No. One, two. He already has the card. What's that mean? You guessed it. I lose five points. Done. And the purple special ability is he takes the topmost building, the blue, puts it over here. And, uh-oh. Oh, right here. Sorry. He's done. Don't touch the purple. I need to build. Well, that works out. The orange six will come out here. I get to do all three. I'll take the three food. I'm not going to get that extra multiplier, but I think it's still worth it. I'm going to build. I'm going to build a farm. And I will take a, the yellow. 
there, turn it into a farm there, so that's the building, and I'll take the die. That cost me nothing to do that. Done. Five, the lowest pip value is going to be the one. That goes one, two, three, four, and five. He takes another die. And the die he takes is with one unpaired, so it'll be with the most, most tower discs, so that'll be yellow he will take, right? Four, four, three, three, yes, yellow. So yellow is now full, and it's not the plus one, so he doesn't increase the pip value. That's done. And it's colorless. Nothing else happens. Okay. All right, so now, is there a way to close this? I can close that without placing any workers. And doing that gets me another six for, with Leo. So the question is, can I get two more gold somewhere? The only way I could get gold is if that, Pisces. But I need it, ah, uh, nope, I'm gonna be one short. Well, we can still do it and blue Oh no, I better not mess around. We're just gonna close the district. So, I have a purple four because I have Leo. That becomes a six. There, I reactivate these two. Again, the exact same thing that I did. So, how many do I have? I have one, two, three, four different colors times three is 12. I do that, 12, do that twice, that's 24 points. 24 and 45 is 69, done. I'm pretty happy with that. And here's why I had to do this. That will advance this, but six. One, two, three, four, five, six. He builds a building, which I forgot to put another yellow out as I am want to do. Here we go. And he builds with at least one unpaired dice. There are none. The color it has more tower pieces of, it's tied between everything. Closest to the top, that'd be orange. And then the special ability of the blue die is why I had to do that. He's going to increase uh, on one of the tracks, which ignoring the ones he's already in the lead there. So I wanted to make sure I got it that he didn't take that back. He doesn't take it, but not yet. The Leo card is what I'm talking about. And he's done. So my last action, I have two gold. It's two points right now, so if there's, what can I do with a three that either gets me more than two points if I use them as wisdom, or I could do this, and that would get me Two points, I guess. I'm not going to... Oh. Oh. Oh, I got it. If I can't... Ah. 
I thought I was being all clever. I have a three. I have three food for five food. Getting three food would give me eight, which gives me 10 points, but I need three wisdom and I don't have three wisdom. Gah. That would have been the first time I've unlocked all my workers. Um, building doesn't make sense unless there's something over there. It's good. It doesn't. So I can get two points here and I'll go ahead and do that. So there I'll spend a stone. I can advance on one track. I will have two spots. I take the Taurus card temporarily. Done. He passes. I pass. That's the end of the round. Then end of the game. So to be clear, he's ahead on all three tracks. So he would take these. It's not going to matter, but there we go. All right. Final scoring. Here we go. End of the fifth round. Each tower disc in its sample area. So here. So let's go ahead, clean this up a little bit for him. Y'all can't see all of that. So Okay. That's all his basic dice. None of that matters. Okay. Each tower disc in its samples area, meaning all of this stuff here, scores points equal to the total pip value of matching colored paired dice. Each tower disc. Okay. So each yellow disc is going to be worth three points. That's going to be six. I'll just bust out the old calculator for this part. because my brain's tired at this point. All right, so he has five, six, and six, 12. 12 and four is, uh, 12 and four is 48 plus six. Then he has 10 times four is 40. And nothing for those. Each building then, so to be clear, Oh, shoot, I, math, I screwed this up. Sorry, 10, 40, 48, 40 and 48, 88, 88 and 6 is 94 he's at so far. Somebody's in the lead. There we go. There's his 94. Each building, whether paired or unpaired, scores one point per matching color die and color and tower disc. Scores one point for every building that has everything. So for all three. So this is has one of each, so that's one, that's two. There's four and four, that's six. Three of those is nine, and no dice, so nine more points. Nine is 103, and uh, he's at 100, okay? And no, it was only one step for him on that one. Uh, all right, so then, then, uh, to, then to adjust your opponent's performance for the combos of the game, check the following conditions. If the red bonus tile is in the first encounter site, it's not. If the purple's in the second, no. If the blue is in the third, no. And the orange is in the fourth, it's not. If three of those conditions are true, add 20 points to the UFO bot score. If four of them are true, add 50 points because multiply it for, I guess, adjacency wise. Apparently that makes it easier. If after this you have more points than the UFO bot, you win the game. Well, I get to do my final scoring now. So we're trying to beat 103. I think I won. We'll see. So I get one point for every leftover gold. I have two. One, two. Then uh, victory points equal to the printed value of your uh, rightmost retired advisors. So the rightmost is going to be that, three points. One, two, three. Then on my temple tracks, ignore my highest one. 
which is that one. Oh, I forgot to add up. He gets, oh, I skipped that, didn't I? Hold on. Yeah, I forgot his. He gets all three tracks. Sorry about that. 16, 16, and 60. I'm pretty sure that's 48. Now it becomes a little bit closer. 48 and 3 is 51. So he's at 151. I'm at 74. Okay, getting back to this. Sorry. Uh, I ignore 16 because that's my highest. I get 3 and 7. That'd be 10. That's 84. Okay. Ooh, that's close. All right. Uh, so now I get my... Uh, here we go. Let's see if not buying that last one is going to cost me. 6, 12, 24, 24 times 4, uh, 48, is that 96, I think, right? 24 times 4, 96. Go back 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 100, so 180, so I beat him. Yay. Whew. All right. Not handily, but I beat him. So, yay us. Uh, Yeah. All right. So now there are ways to increase or decrease the difficulty. You can increase the difficulty uh, when the UFO bot increases the, encounter, uh, the value of an encounter site, increase it by an additional step, uh, except if the additional uh, increase would overflow from a six to a one. So it gets two jumps instead of one. That's nasty. When the UFO bot gains a Freeman die, increase its value by one, even if it's not the plus icon. Remove the gold from the leftmost district cards also at the end of the second round. So you're removing access to gold, which is tower pieces. And finally, the last thing you can do, any mix of these, is when the UFO bot increases the value of an encounter site, it causes the value uh, to overflow from a six to a one, you lose three points. Now, if you want to decrease the difficulty, uh, reset the UFO's military track progress every round. Um, so in other words, not completely. What it means is if the UFO bot was there, it would just reset like ours would to the beginning of the most recently crossed superiority marker. Um, then from there, let's see, what else can you do? Um, UFO bot only scores the lowest two of the temples, just like we do, or you win ties on the temple track, or ignore the score adjustments after final scoring, meaning for depending on where the bonus markers are. So there you go. Um, yeah. Whew. I'm spent though. I, that went like way longer than I thought it was going to, but streaming. And because it's solo, that's that. So it's not sponsored, but because we're doing a sponsored stream on Tuesday of this, I don't think, I mean, y'all saw. Uh, I think it's, I think David did a really good job with the uh, solo design. And I mean, like I said, this is my sixth play of it since we've gotten it. So I should tell you something. But there you go. That is the solo active bot uh, from David Turtsy on Adam Kwipensky's game. Keep in mind, this will not be in the box, but it will be available for you to print off by the time you get your copy. So, what do you need to print off? Double-sided, that's one page of rules. That's two pages of rules. Then, player aid, if you wanna use this, or honestly, you can do what I did, which was just read all this, because I wasn't gonna be able to commit those to memory while streaming, but there's that, and then that. That's, that's all you have to print off. The passive AI, which is beat your own score, or beat a certain threshold, I think it's 180, and then based on where the bonus tokens are. That is in the rule book, uh, that comes with the game, but yeah, like I said, that's pretty simple, so. 
Thanks, everybody. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Um, we'll be back. I believe we're going to do the weekly look ahead tomorrow. We have this on Tuesday. We have Voidfall coming the following week. We have New Frontiers next week. Um, and we'll go from there. We'll figure it out from there. So thanks, everybody. Uh, like, subscribe, consider supporting the show. If you want to over on patreon.com forward slash ACHQ, certainly would appreciate it if you enjoy the content. Think it's worth a couple bucks a month? Certainly would appreciate it, y'all. So be kind to one another. Wear your masks uh, when you're in indoor spaces. There's no reason not to. And uh, I'll see y'all, I guess, tomorrow for the weekly look at. All right. Take care, y'all. Thanks, everybody. And thanks to everybody over at Board and Dice for the review copy. And even though this one isn't sponsored, you get the idea. Thanks, y'all.